properties last week. Sure, the city would be just fine leaving things as they are. Both of these buildings are now using, both of these buildings we are now using are in great shape. The city was approached well before the new ODOT garage was built, inquiring if we would have an interest in the Irving Street property. It would be great to house all of our equipment and departments in one area, but we don't have to eat. The administration's proposal is that we move, that this move would be revenue neutral. That is, it wouldn't cost the city a thing. My impression of the Irving Street facility is that there are two buildings, a hoop barn and a salt building, that are usable. The salt building will need a roof and eventually main one to close the north end of the hoop barn. The mechanics, heat, lighting, electrical all seem to be in good shape. The two furnaces in the front building were running. One was a newer high efficiency, the other was older, and I would think that it wouldn't cost more than $5,000 to replace if something did happen to it. Uh, may need to replace a small roof over the offices at some point. I didn't see any leaks, as no leaks were visible throughout the other building we toured, even though we had a substantial amount of rain during that previous week. The rest of the sheds would most likely have to be come down. The offices will need painting and flooring, and the rest would just require general cleanup. And just this is my side note, just remember, this is the money that we would put into it, and it would come after we sold one of the buildings. Uh, the environmental aspect would be my greatest concern. The underground tanks have been removed, and my inquiry to the law director was met with an affirmative that there were no environmental issues. Uh, and I have asked him again this week uh, about it again and uh, got the same answer. So obviously uh, it's, it's going to cost something to get this done. But I feel that if we secure the sale of the city property on Marion Road before we start any renovations, it will indeed not cost the city anything. It should hopefully leave us with a small surplus. Then in the future when the facility on Isaacville Road is sold, the city can construct a building to house the street apartment. This would complete the move of all city services to the Irving Street facility, helping the appearance of that area. I'm very adamant about not spending any funds that are not generated from the sale of the city's properties. This may also speed up the sale of the Mary Street property if the administration think they could also use those funds Irving Street renovations, which personally I would have a problem with that. Uh, uh, that's the way I see it, and we'll be talking about this Tuesday night. Uh, thank you, and that was uh, my response to one of uh, the constituents, so I just thought that was a good way of summing up 
my feelings on it. So uh, I guess any other uh, people on the uh, <laughs> committee want to say anything? <coughs> You get a chance to work first? Yeah. Yeah. You did. And I uh, watched the video the other day. I would agree with most everything that Mr. Wirebaugh said. Um, I toured those facilities just the same. Um, I actually worked in another facility in this town that was left empty and abandoned for probably 15 to 20 years before a company finally came in and started putting money into it. And there really wasn't much renovation they had to do. Most of the money they put into it was putting in their own equipment, their own cranes, and, and everything like that. They updated some safety precautions in the building, but other than that, it was basically the same style of building as what the ODOT facility is. Um, I saw a lot of the same exact things in the ODOT facility as what I saw in that building that I had worked at before, and there were little to no maintenance issues with that. So, seeing what I saw at the ODOT facility, like I said, the newer, um, Dan said the newer furnace in one area, the other furnace, I believe, even though it was a little bit older, I thought we were told that, I believe the inside guts were all replaced in it, so it was all up to date, basically brand new, just an old shell around it. Um, so, it sounds like a really great idea. Um, something that could possibly put us a net surplus to where we could possibly maybe use that money to fix up some other things that need fixing up, like the parking system. Bruce or Mark, I guess. Well, I did not, I was not able to tour or video, view the video. Um, I was out of town where the tour was and, and had a chance to get the video. Anybody? Well, I guess I don't want to use Andy as well, Andy and Kevin, so I don't know. You have any input? We're all in this together. We're all going down together. I don't know. And I. My biggest drawback is what are we going? What would we get out of the other two facilities? I mean, there's no guarantee, um, especially the one on Eisen Field. I I worked there when it was the county garage, when it was the old facility before the new building was put there. That was too many years ago. Um, you know, with that location, it's got limited access. It doesn't have, I don't know what, who would want to buy that and what price would they be willing to pay for that property. I'm just worried about the finances on how much it would cost, uh, especially if we need to build something at the Irving Street especially uh, the two buildings that we currently use are approximately 20 years old, give or take. And from my understanding, seeing from the outside, they look like they're in decent shape. I didn't get to see the inside, but what did they look? They look... The, main, the buildings we do have are maintained very well. Okay. But, but it's what it looks like from the outside. Um, I'm, I'm still just not certain because I, I've had multiple people tell me they are <coughs> against this move because they fear of the uh, cost that would be passed on to them. That, that, I'm just saying that's... Yeah, but it's going to come through us. And he's over here telling us he's not going to spend anything, so... Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yes, go, Mr. go ahead. Here, have, you, have you read the plan at all? I know you haven't heard of it. Have you taken time even to read the plan? <laughs> I'm just reading it now. I'm... So how can you be against it if you don't even... Or for it? I mean, you don't even I'm know. saying for what the cost of the bill of what you... What are, what are you thinking you're going to get out of these two existing buildings? I, I When we try to make every effort to have everybody, you know, at the committee meetings and go over this thing, 
there it all is. I mean, we had plenty of opportunity to tour this and explain this all to you. And like Mr. Wirebaugh said, you know, there's, I use the term revenue neutral. It's not actually going to be revenue neutral. It's going to be revenue positive. It's a great plan. I mean, you've got a low risk plan. We're freeing up. If you look at Isaac Neal Road, uh, there's a lot of activity there. There's no, there's nothing for sale as far as I know. I didn't see anything for sale out there. Um, we have had you know, people approach us about it. You know, knew what, knew what we were going to do. Uh, and so I don't think it's going to have any trouble selling. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, we can put a minimum bid on the property, what we need out of it. We're not in a distressed position. We're dealing from a position of strength on both buildings. You know, we have assets we can sell. And the other, uh, the other thing is too, you know, we're freeing up two buildings for potential employers. So if there ever was a, a situation that was low risk, it's this situation. It also takes care of an ice store and the north side of town is going to be sitting there. You, you know, you can see what happens with ice stores um, around town that sit there when the owners aren't um, cooperative. Um, there's, if you take, the, uh, you know, I don't know how much time you want to take in this meeting to read this, but you know, there it is. I agree. I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how we can have a more positive uh, if you, you know, thing to pass on to you. Um, and Mr. Chairman summarized it pretty well. Um, so either you either you know. You, if you haven't taken the time to read it, and you either trust the chairman and the mayor and the administration, or you don't. You know. no. I didn't say I didn't trust. I'm saying I have doubts, and I'm not saying nobody has a crystal ball to tell us exactly what the properties are going to go for, even if we have a minimum bid. Well, if nobody hits a minimum bid, then we stay where we are. I, I, as simple uh, as that. Until we, until we, uh, we don't have to go anywhere. We can put them up in six months or a year. You know, we, there's no, there's no pressure on us to do that. We don't anticipate that happening, but we, we've got a dollar bill invested. That's that's the point I'd like to make. Uh, and I don't know if we'd see this enough. It sounds like, you know, and I know it'd be great if this could all be done in a year or two years, you know, but this could take 10 years, 20 years, you know. I mean, we could we could get the one garage moved, uh, sell or sell the building, and then move the one garage in it maybe several years before we even sell the next one. And, uh, and until we have an offer, then we don't move forward. Then we just, as far as I know, right now is a good time. I mean, it, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Uh, now cool. would be a good time. I mean, there's there's not a lot of commercial property, commercial buildings for sale now. And this appraisal was done over a year ago. I honestly think the value is going up more. We don't know that. I'm just uh, thinking that it is because real estate has gone up in price in this community in the last year. Uh, uh, my, my opinion, I think that we can bring new life into that property. Uh, right now it's sitting there and the only thing it's going to do, like you said earlier, is it, the longest it's left unused is not good for any property, any building. And uh, I think this is... Uh, uh, we ask our residents to take care of their properties. I think this is our opportunity to step in and take a property that so it doesn't become blighted, so it doesn't become an eyesore uh, to the city. And uh, uh, the things that you know you're talking about doing is is fencing it in, putting a complete fence around it, so that uh, uh, you know it, it cuts it off basically from the homes and things that are out there, and uh, fixing up the front buildings for offices and, and those kind of things. And I think that. Uh, uh, that can be nothing but an improvement up in that part of town. Any other input? Well, yeah. I, I just, uh, 
going back to the uh, appraisal value question, um, I think that's been kind of a point that's been touched on, but I think would the plan then be to just set the current appraisal value as a minimum that we're going to accept to sell those properties? Because I, I really feel that that's been a point that's been kind of bounced around as well. We're never going to get that, but if we're saying that we're holding for, a, for the appraised value, it may take longer to sell them for that, but I think that's what the plan requires for it to, you know, remain revenue neutral, or at least closer to revenue neutral. I think there's obviously un potential for unforeseen expenses at Irving Street, uh, because it is a large property and you never know, I mean, there's always the chance that you can underestimate on a repair or a maintenance issue. Uh, but I agree with what Sis is saying that the Ward 4 area, when I think of the people who live on Irving Street, Manette, Willard, all, all that area, they don't deserve to have that property go downhill and become a blight on that whole neighborhood. Um, I think it'd be a shame to let that happen. And I also think that, you know, these buildings, while they need some work, they're not that bad. I mean, I think they are, uh, you know, the, the largest building is a concrete block structure. I, it looks to be in good condition and uh, I think it has a lot of years of life left in it. Um, so I think the, I, the key here is though that the additional spending isn't going to occur until the other buildings are sold. So it's not going to be spending ahead of income. And I don't know that that's been clear all along, but uh, that's just kind of reiterating. No, that, this is Mr. Yeah, we did, we had phase one and phase two. That's how we, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and our intention was to set the minimum and sell the water distribution garage yes, first. Yes, right. That would be phase one, set your minimum price there. Um, interesting on phase two, we've uh, our, our estimated cost for a, a new building was six hundred fifty thousand. Um, we've talked to a couple builders, and we might be able to do the same size of building for under five hundred thousand. So we could actually, the net gain is two hundred sixty-two thousand. It would go into our funds. Where we use the parks or whatever, it could approach you know three fifty to four hundred thousand too, which would be uh, it would be incredible to get that kind of money to be able to invest in some parks and some other things around the city. At the same time, if we sell those two buildings, you know we've got people working there, so we're going to make income tax on them. So. That's a big feature. Um, when I looked at the videos today, um, <coughs> it seems as though the Dodge Garage isn't a, it's, it's it serves the purpose for the water distribution, but it doesn't do anything extraordinary. I mean, we got a big showroom that's really non-existent for use for the water. I mean, yeah, we do have it, but I mean, it's not contributing to the city services as far as the Dodge Garage. Um, <clears throat> they do have um, storage in the one side of the place where uh, they have hydrants and water couplers and all different types of couplings for water. And I kind of noticed in the video too that they don't really have a nice uh, access to it. it. It's got like a walk-in um, garage door that's probably, you know, maybe six feet wide, probably seven feet high. I mean, there's nothing that you can get a, a pickup truck backed in to unload anything. Uh, that I, I noticed that that was uh, kind of a, a problem if I was in the water distribution. I mean, everything has to be, it looks like it has to be done by a hand card. Um, in, in the back part of the facility, uh, there is one, one lift yet that uh, still left yet. 
I was listening to the video, it said that the two lifts were sold already uh, out of the garage. There's two left, but I've only seen the one. They're actually they're storing stuff up on different pieces of glorified storage racks right now. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, I get, what, what I'm getting at is, is I don't believe the Dodge Garage is the best use for the city when it comes to uh, uh, being an efficient use of the space. Um, for what I've seen of the state garage, they're, they're, they're old buildings, I'll admit it. Uh, uh, I noticed uh, in the video it didn't mention anything about that, that, row, that row shed, or what do you want to call it, it's on the west side of the property. Uh, <clears throat> I know someone had said something about tearing it down or pulling it down or whatever, but I'm um, not real sure what the, what the costs are involved. I tried to look through the paper, I didn't see any disposal costs or anything of that of getting rid of it. I don't think we're going to do that in house. Yeah, okay. So sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, to continue on, uh, I don't really have a problem for a dollar. I don't have a problem of going to the OGOT building. I just want to make sure that we do it in baby steps. Uh, I don't have a problem with doing the phase one, uh, but, you know, let's not just jump into one or two and <coughs> throw all the money we can throw. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman again, we would um, just address a couple things. <coughs> uh, on the thing of building five, six, and seven, those pictures, our picture, they were, are going to be demolished. Those are those lean twos on the left side. Right. Those are not rehabbable, and we have no intention of keeping those. And Mr. Chairman mentioned that's all going to be done in the house. And second thing, yes, we would be very conservative. We would do phase one, and then we'd come back to you and say, you know, we're ready to do phase two. And uh, that would go, that would go through you folks again, and we keep you uh, abreast of everything in the plan. And who knows, after we go through phase one, there might be some additional uses that would maybe pop up in that property. Uh, I, I just, but just, I, I, I remember when uh, we took over the county property on Isaac Bill Road and uh, had to tear it down, start all over. And uh, I have to admit that facility is really nice. I mean, uh, it's, it's nice, but congested back there. I mean, uh, it's, so, but uh, my feelings are is that phase one, oh God, and uh, Pretty good steps and keep, uh, keep track of the checkbook. Yeah. I was going to say, I uh, the day that we uh, went out and toured everything, I wanted to make a point of above asking anybody else, ask Mr. Dunn what him and his workers feel about moving to these facilities. Um, the, the phase one move, Jeff said, is going to be just, it'll be things so much better for them to have everything in one under one roof like that. Um, but he does agree that we do need to take it in baby steps for phase two, moving the water distribution and all that. Um, but he said that he feels it's a, real, a really great idea. Um, he said they're just, you know, they're congested out there. And the biggest benefit to him and his group of guys was is that they would all be under one roof and they do a lot of projects together as it is and they're, you know, intertwining. So it would make it to where they would be able to communicate better and do their job in a more efficient manner. So I just want to share that. And one more thing, uh, uh, Mr. McKeever made a good point about uh, uh, Isaac Field, that there's not much more room out there, so I would like to see this community grow, and uh, where we, maybe we would need a better garbage truck or a dump truck or a plow or something, and that, I would like to see that area, I would like to see Isaac Field be too small for us, because we have grown. Uh, so, you know, looking forward, we always have to do that too. So, just wanted to make that point. Uh, if there's any, no other questions, I we should go to the uh, public here. <laughs> so, any other questions? Okay. I, I guess okay. maybe just yeah. one point that, uh, you know, if the city now currently, we have around 88 employees, I believe it is in the city, <coughs> and uh, we're down from like 130, something like that. Uh, 
back maybe 15 years ago. But yeah, probably close. As, as, we've, as we've consolidated, we've also had to consolidate jobs. And uh, one of the things that we're looking to do is if we can get both of these both of these big departments into one building then, then uh, we have a, a much easier communication between our two supervisors there as to where people will be working that day and be able to fill in those spots. We no longer have a luxury of having uh, 10 full-time people on, on garbage. We don't, we used to do, uh, uh, what, five days and two runs every day uh, to pick up garbage. We're now down to where we do seven runs in a week. There are two days of the week that we actually do two runs. The rest of it is just done with one run, simply because of personnel. And we're in, con in conversation now with Mr. Dunn that we're going to cut that back to six runs in a week. So that then those people that we that are doing part of the, the, the trash runs, the garbage runs, can also be used in other areas in the city uh, to get work done that uh, uh, that obviously needs to be done. So uh, I think that's a, a big consolidation that uh, could work eventually when we get everybody under one roof. Okay. Let's go. Turn it over. Public ask us. Yeah. Name. Ask. We need uh, your name and address as you step to the uh, microphone, please. Who would like to go first? Come on, Steve. Mr. Piper, welcome back. Hey, I'm for return. Always, <laughs> hey, always good to see you. I'm James Street. As I listen to this whole discussion that's been going on, it seems to me like there's only been two options put forward, and one of them is you consolidate all the services into the former ODOT facility, or then option B is you let it go and do nothing and just stay the way it is. Uh, I guess what I would propose would be option C is, you know, it's not very often you get five acres for a dollar. So you'd be foolish not to take that. So take it. That being said, when I look at that facility, it's five acres, and it appears that like over four and a half of it's paid, and it causes nothing but a giant amount of stormwater runoff. I would take the property, go in there with a bulldozer, scoop all that out, get with Bruce Brandstetter and dig a giant retention pond and start draining the north end of the town into it and get credit from the EPA with our stormwater separation. To me, it would be a better use of it. Because as far as consolidating the street departments all in one building, at the end of the day, your call savings are negligible compared to what you get from going with the EPA route. And I think it would be a better benefit to the entire community, you know, get farther ahead on the plan and try to get some of these uh, extra charges on our utility bill knocked off a little bit sooner. This is my input. Next. Go for it. Go for it. Need a name and a address. Kathy Fulmer, 1107 South Sandusky Avenue. I wasn't going to speak, but I have a lot of questions. Um, you say you're purchasing it for a dollar. Are you purchasing it for a dollar or are you, you leasing it? It's a purchase for a dollar. It's, it's a, a purchase? It's a purchase with the right of revision. What's the right of revision? Uh, it's explained in the ODOT contract in section four. Everything I Three. saw, everything I saw is being leased for many, many years. No, you don't a, put a million dollars into a property or lease it. Yeah. No, it. It's a purchase. It says in several places. Section 2, it's a purchase. Um, section 5, it's a conveyance, purchase. Section 6, That's the conveyance. first time I saw a purchase. Mm -hmm. And just everything I've read, you know, read. Yeah. First time I saw that it was actual purchase yeah. and not a land lease. A 99 year lease. Originally, when we, we've been talking to ODOT for a couple of years about this, and originally the proposal from the ODOT uh, um, real estate firm was a, lease, a, a 99 year lease. That's probably why you heard that. And then they, they uh, uh, proposed that we just purchase it earlier this year. So that's, that's why you heard that, right? 
Great. And then my next question would be, um, driving across from Nazarene Church, the property that you own on Marion Road, that is one good looking property. And that's almost, what, four acres there? It could be yours. <laughs> you just annexed it into the city, so I don't want to do that. So it was given to the city, wasn't it, yes, as sir. a gift seven years ago? A gift, you're good once you receive a gift, it's your property good to do with it what you want. But why wouldn't you like maybe, um, and you said you're selling lifts out of it when you get rid of your equipment? You don't need lifts anymore? Or? Well, I've only observed it that that's what's been done. Why wouldn't you take a really nice property with plenty of land around it and add a really nice front to it and use that property that you already own? And, and that dollar purchase and digging it up and getting all the old concrete, I just know by trying to fix up old stuff, the expenses are always twice what you think they'll be. And then you end up with a, a repaired old building. Yes, uh, Ken, it, it's addressed, it addressed a couple of things. It's a beautiful location. It's a beautiful commercial location. So having a government facility on a commercial location like that uh, is not necessary. We don't need to be in that, that uh, high traffic area. We don't need to have that thing. And most of our guys are out doing work. You know, we're not trying to make an impression. We want to sell it to somebody. It's a nice impression when we're in the town. On the right. Well, we we want to, we want somebody to buy that that's going to open a business there. You know, and really. Been, Isn't there a vacant warehouse and business out into the warehouse district out in the newer area where all the manufacturing is going? I think there's one available out there. If you're talking about that, the one I'm thinking of, that's in the millions of dollars. Oh, is that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I just, I'm just yeah. hashing around questions in my mind. Yeah. If you yeah. already have the four acres right. and you have all the land around it, why wouldn't you add new construction onto a very nice building and make it adaptable to what you need? Just for some of the reasons that were addressed tonight, you know, like Mr. Shock said about the north side uh, and about what I said about uh, the other location of it. You know, being ideal for some type of a commercial business so we can actually put people to work there and use it as a tax base for us. No one's going to no, no one's going to open up a commercial, you know, retail type business at the current ODOT facility. It's well, that's the state's problem. That's kind of our problem too. Well, yeah, okay. Five for a dollar. I love this suggestion. Go in and clean it all up. Put another park in or plant trees or something, but you don't have to get rid of. You said the Isaac Field, is that the road is on Isaac Field? No. The, the first phase would be on the Marion Road, is what you're No, the other one that you. Um, the Isaac Field Road is the second phase. Okay. You said that building is relatively new? Yes, it is. And you said it's not big enough, and then. This, you said that we're downsizing, not doing as many runs, not having as many employees. So, why are we upsizing on buildings? We're not upsizing on buildings. We're, 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 we have enough room in that building. We're I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, it's upsizing. just questions. We're, we're, I still we're, don't we're not, think we're not, I have we answers be, to. Square feet, we wouldn't be increasing. I guess, I guess I'm thinking it's a real shithole of a property, and I wouldn't touch it. And yeah, we're gonna make it look. Lot better. That's basically what I'm thinking. Yeah. If, you, if you look at the sheds that are on uh, the west side, those are all coming down. Those are disgusting. And that'd be right. great improvement. Yeah, it will be. And we're going to put a new fence up. We'll probably put some landscaping. But you're kind of abandoning two good buildings. To we're not abandoning them. You know, we're, we're putting those to good use too. Oh, I hope they get sold. If they don't, we're staying where we are. Oh, no, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, I don't uh, know. I just had questions. I just couldn't figure out when I saw the the nice building on Marion Road why you wouldn't enhance that. Make it a you know when you come into Cyrus, make it nice. Make it super nice for all the guys. We want somebody to do that in their own. You're probably going to spend less money. No, it's it's really not. I don't know. You go put the roof on. I just put a half a roof on a property. It cost me ten grand. 
Yeah. And my second appraisal was 17, and it was a half a roof. Things are expensive when you go repairing, mm -hmm. and you had, still we, end we up got, with We got the estimates on all our repairs. It's, it's here. Okay. Thank you. Well, Thank you that's, that's my two cents. Uh, we appreciate two cents. Well, one point, and, and you know, both of those are really good ideas, but both of those are going are are going to cost us. It's going to cost. We got to find the money somewhere to do that, to do either one of those. With the current plan, it's to be revenue neutral. So we have to keep that in mind. I always hear about the costs, our costs. But the the, the main thing about the, the plan that I like about it, and uh, the mayor's assured me, and and like I say, I'm. I'm sitting on finance committee, and I'm not going to let it happen. Uh, you're not getting any money for that, okay? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. We know that. <laughs> okay, so any more questions? Ben Corner, 510 North Sandusky Avenue. Um, I hear the mayor mention how he wants a business to go into Marion Road, so I guess the question is for him, what type of business would you allow on Marion Road? Any type of business, uh, as long as they're, it, it, as long as it's, you know, that the zone, um, or just the one, what it's zoned for. Well, you, you know, we have to go through zoning. You know, we cannot put any type of business there. So, how lenient is the city going to be if a business wants to buy it and say revitalize it and move a business in there? Depends what kind of business it is. So it's pretty much up to the city's discretion. It's up to the laws that we have to go by, you know. The zoning that this council has created and the administration, we have we, we can't you know we have to follow the rules that are there. Okay. The other question I have is who appraised both properties? Uh, Ken and Osmond. Where they uh, um, I I we get you copy the appraisals if you like. Okay. They're a state certified appraiser? Yes. Go okay. ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, well, I know somebody's got a question. Well, I do, but you're going to make me get back up to the podium. Yeah, you got to state your name again. Well, we got it. All right. The one. Steve. That we're getting for sir. You do have to go to the podium. Really? Yes, you do. <laughs> so you be on TV. <laughs> Okay, the one that we are getting for the sewer projects, wouldn't that pay for digging a hole for your stormwater separation? Yeah. It's already spoken for, it's just going to be for time. And how, how much was the entire loan? I had to when it's spoken for, but you don't know how much it's for. I know we're talking about something else tonight. I can get that information for you if you want to come up to the office. Mm -hmm. I don't because have all those figures. The reason I'm asking, no, because the reason I'm asking because I don't disagree with your comment, and you know, the plan you have now, the consolidation, you know, of all the buildings, so you know, it's revenue neutral, revenue positive, or whatever. Whereas, you know, my plan right that costs money, so now where you come up with the money? So that's my question. What about the loan? Just put that in mind. I mean, my old plan is with our EPA and our stormwater stuff. It's a different phase. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I may. Uh, we have an agreement with the uh, EPA, and uh, in that agreement, we've specified what exact work we're, we're, we've got planned for these first seven years. And the money that we have is being directed towards that plan because that's where we're going to get our credit from them for staying with the plan that, that they okay. We can't just simply <coughs> decide to pick up and go to another part of town and do something even though it may be good for an EPA project. Right now, we're in that first, we're in that first agreement with them. And uh, it took a long time to get that agreement in. And I think our, our, one of our main goals is to see that we stick to that. And that when we come to the end of that, we can say that we've completed it. Because like in about, I think, two years, we have to come up with phase two of that plan too. Because there's uh, more work that we know that needs to be done. But uh, that would be a good idea, and there is extra property and things up there in that north end of town, uh, right beside us. 
And uh, you know that that may be a, a good idea, Steve. But I think right now the money is committed to our first phase with the EPA. I don't want to go too far off. You guys are allowed to talk about special. <laughs> you know that rule, right? Okay. Anyone else? Bankhauser, 1675 South Sandusky. I had a question for something that the law director said about the purchase on that property. You said, Mr. Ratliff, that it was a purchase with something tied to it. What What did you say that was? Right to revision, section five of the contract. <clears throat> the conveyance instrument will be a director's deed as provided for in section 5501.45E of the Ohio Revised Code that quick claims all rights, titles, and interests of the state of Ohio, but conditioned on grantees' continued use of the subject property for public purposes with a right of reversion in the event that such use is discontinued or terminated. So as long as we use it for a public purpose, which is city ownership, essentially, um, we retain the deed. Should we turn it into a commercial endeavor or you know, sell it to... Right. Uh, so there's a chance that it could end up back under state ownership with that purchase contract. If we do something that would transfer the ownership of that property from us to a for-profit entity or a non-governmental entity or a uh, otherwise non-public purpose. We could transfer it to a private entity if that private entity was going to operate it for such things as a park or other things that would be determined to be a public purpose. So 20 years ago when they built the new building out at Isaac Beale, they probably weren't thinking when they built that that, hey, <clears throat> In 20 years from now, we might be in a different location, but if we get into the SODOT location, there's a possibility 20 years from now, we could end up somewhere else again, and all of that money that we put into that property is gone. And basically, our rent of being in there for the 20 years was all that money that we put in there. We would be in control of whether or not that happened. But, Council changes, ideas change, there, there could be a situation. Okay. Currently, we're in violation of the uh, deed restrictions for All Miller Park. But there's nobody counting us to return that to the All Miller family. So it's possible. It's possible we could get hit by an asteroid. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but the revision clause is, is purely limited to public purpose. So as long as this body doesn't do anything to transfer it out of a public purpose, then, then we don't anticipate the state reclaiming the property. I, I think that Mr. Piper's idea with the storm pond is the least risky because if you put a big pond in like that, there's pretty much a chance that it's going to be a big pond forever. So instead of putting money in the buildings that we may or may not be in 20 years from now. The pond route, even with that deed restriction, is the less risky as far as the city losing out on investment into a property. That's, that's all I got. Thank you. Anyone else? Rick Smith, 1131 Ricky Lee Lane. And uh, I've got a lot of years in commercial construction behind me. And um, right now, both of our facilities are not in residential areas. So we're going to move into a residential area with uh, loading salt trucks at night. And such things like that going on. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. And I'm really wondering about the uninsulated block building in the front, how we're going to insulate that building to match what we have. I have no problem with moving this all into one facility. Um, I tried to get that done several years ago 
to the service director with buying the old insulation building, which is a huge building, uh, but instead he decided to buy it for himself. Because right there, all we got to do is remove a fence, and we're all in one spot, and we're out of the residential area. So that's just my thoughts. Thank you. Mr. Smith, just for clarification, you were not talking about Mr. Wagner buying the oh, building. Oh no, this okay. is this person bought that building. Understand? Just yeah, Mr. Wagner. No, this is years ago. Okay. I tried to get this done. Trying to clear his good name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it was not Mr. Wagner. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll ask again. Any more? Yeah, so we got to do this movement. It's like this thing that I just wanted to, I forgot to say something the last time I was up here. The, the state, you know, Ward 4 up there, there's residential area, people are working in there when there's salt and the roads and stuff. So the people in that, that residential neighborhood, they're used to state working in there after hours. If the city moves in there, there could be more use of the property after hours in that residential neighborhood than there was before. Because not only is the state solving the roads, but if they end up moving the fuel tanks out there, if phase two fully gets into effect, the fuel tanks are gonna go, which they're going to have every shift change or something, I think. The police are out there filling their cars up, and that's every night. And if uh, water line breaks in town happen in the middle of the night, they're going to have to come in there, operate out of that facility. So that residential neighborhood could end up seeing more commercial use out of that property. And the alternative, and we haven't really even talked about this much, is if, if the city of Bucyrus does not end up in that property and the state decides they're gonna auction it off, it would then potentially, it could go up for a private owner, which would then, it could be regulated by zoning to only operate during nine to five uh, hours of the day. So people in Ward 4 in that neighborhood could if it did end up in private ownership, they could have less burden on them, as in the facilities not being operated out of all hours of the night. Just another comment on that. Okay, thank you. All right, going once. Bail. Going twice. All right. Two long through. We're looking for a request for legislation then, if, uh, if you want to continue with this, to make a decision about it, to put it before full council. Okay, I would like to ask my uh, committee to make a vote to somebody one way or the other. Motion made. To, make it. to what? To draft the legislation. To purchase the, yep. okay. Do I have a second? A dollar. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No opposed. It carries. Thank you. Next up on the agenda is the purchase of property at oh, East you got that. It ain't Mansfield Street and Penn Avenue. I could finally let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think that's uh, the law director's thing. Right? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, this is something we've uh, worked on for about five years now. Um, we have uh, an opportunity to acquire uh, a certain parcel of property, um, really to invest in a uh, parcel of commercial property. We have a uh, proposed agreement in place with the current owner through her attorney. 
The purchase price for this property is $24,525.47. Uh, the reason for that number is because currently $11,525.47 is owed in back taxes. Of that $11,525.47, 296620 would flow back to us. That's our special assessments on the property. So that would reduce our overall liability, but it's just got flow. Uh, and the purpose of that would be to acquire McFarland's Mobile Home Park and to clear that land and, uh, and then hopefully sell it to somebody that wants to develop it into a commercial entity. It's a high traffic area. It's a desirable piece of property. So that is the proposal before you today. Oh, good point. The money is uh, technically already appropriated. It is in my uh, law director or the property maintenance budget to uh, demolish properties within the city. Uh, we have 25000 that we appropriate for that each year. Um, last year we didn't spend it because we were trying to get things worked out on another piece of property. But this year it will cover that and uh, I think make good use of it. Now, I have, oh, Mr. Chairman, Go right I ahead. have one question. Mm -hmm. When, if we do go through this, which I'm in favor, uh, all those will be demolished on the property and then removed so that they don't end up somewhere else inside the city limits? We, we will, um, be, because of bidding requirements, we will uh, put those out for bid, for sale, as scrap only. Uh, salvage scrap and they have to be scrapped on site well they can be hauled off and scrapped somewhere um, if, if somebody wants to go to them most of those haven't moved in 40 or 50 years i don't know that they're movable <laughs> um i did talk i, I, just don't <laughs> want to see somewhere else yeah. right I, I did talk to uh, mr corner's brother the other day about you know how these things get scrapped and, and everything and they're a problem you know a big scrapping company like that because of the insulation and just all the junk <laughs> that are attached on the inside. They're not really um, uh, a high value scrap okay. item. They're more the type of thing that, a, um, you know, your neighborhood uh, scrapper, you know, would want to get in, disassemble, scrap the good stuff and, and demolish the rest. So we'll put them out for bid uh, to say if somebody wants to come in, scrap them, salvage them. Uh, if not, uh, then we will, uh, if they don't sell through that bid process, then we have the authority to salvage them or scrap them ourselves, which will do that through <coughs> selling them or giving them to somebody that wants to come in and do the work. Get rid of them for us. Yes, there will also be some sewer and water work that needs to be done on that property. We have talked to uh, Jeff Dunn. Uh, their crews are looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> and then what are we going to do with the property? Um, it's up to you. You'll, you'll own it. Um, my recommendation would be to contact a, a commercial realtor, get some ideas, some appraisals, and uh, we have a couple of options. One, we can put it out to bid. Uh, two, one of the things that um, we have qualified for recently is the opportunity zones, um, and that is something that would allow for certain types of investment. We talked in the past about whether or not we want to create some economic development districts within the city. This would be a perfect opportunity to create an economic development district that would allow us to sell it not through going through the bid process, but as part of an economic development entity, um, there may be some money grants and things like that that may be available for that. Additionally, we can add more land or other properties to it so that there are some other things that we think would qualify or kind of blighted areas. We may, we may want to talk about packaging some of those things. The immediate thing is to get that thing cleared off and yeah. pull those well. Quick question, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, do you know if there's been any like surveying or as far as like underground will any of those will we have to rip out any of the underground sewage water lines that are all running through there? Are they existing or can we cap them off? The, the, the plan will be to cap them off. We're not 100% sure what is there historically. Uh, the way the water and sewer 
work at that place is it all goes to a central location and then it runs individually to the trailers. So the plan potentially is right there at that central place. We can, we can cap them off there. And then as we clear the land, we can kind of break that stuff out very easily. Yeah. Yes. Um, being a ward councilman for that area, that's been a, a source of uh, complaints and eyesores for years and years. A lot of people come into town from the east side and uh, they drive by it every day and, and it's hard to believe that something like that can exist. Um, took a ride out there here just the other day and uh, just about every trailer is vacant out there except one. Uh, I counted one person right in there yet, but uh, they're in deplorable condition. And uh, uh, up until recently, uh, I actually seen extension cords running from one trailer to the other. And, and that's how they were providing electricity, is through extension cords. Um, you know, council had put the money aside and uh, I think that would be the, one of the best uses of our money, public money, is to uh, redevelop that area and get our, our, get our taxes back to us. And uh, for, uh, for the investment, I think that will come out ahead. Plus the, the neighborhood out there on Wayne and Penn Avenue, they've put up with that for years and years and years. <coughs> And there's been a lot of drug activity out in that area as well. So uh, it, it's only a, a, a positive step forward. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I so move that we go ahead and, and uh, purchase, yeah. well, purchase the property through the law director's budget. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think we need to commend Mr. Adam. I mean, it's, it's almost uh, too good to be true, you know, to get it properly in our hands and in a, at such a good price and under budget. So, fantastic job, Mr. Rattler. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, well, uh, with that, uh, I'm not sure if this is right, because typically we have public speaking at the beginning and then no, not in, not in this meeting. <coughs> so I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. We're adjourned. Oh. About 628? 728. Or 728, I'm sorry. We are adjourned. I guess that's all I have. I think you're still up. Oh, oh yeah, I guess I am. Oh, I got my papers. Okay, there it is. That's the finance. Okay, I'm sorry. Now we're going into finance. Please. Yeah, okay, yeah, and I'm still up. So we'll just go right into finance committee. Uh, we are starting at 728, and our members are myself. Excuse me, just a minute. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we need to take just a short break? Okay, we'll take a short recess then. That's when we'll begin this at 732. Uh, special Finance Committee. Uh, members are Dan Wireball, Kevin Myers, Andrew Schock, and Hanukkah Sack is absent. And uh, the Special Finance Committee was called by Mayor Jeff Reeser to discuss the purchase of the ODOT facility on West Irving. Uh, we'll start at 732. So all I'm looking for, I guess, from the Finance Committee is the okay to go ahead and spend the dollar on the ODOT facility. So, do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, what, do we need to do anything with the purchase on? Yes, just your approval same from, thing. Yeah, okay, even though the thing. money is in the budget, let's just uh, take the step to uh, say that, it, that the finance committee discussed it and approved it. Okay, so same with the uh, Mansfield Street and Penn Avenue property. Uh, with the money already appropriated, uh, I'll make a motion that we grant our approval. Stamp of approval. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? None. Uh, did you vote on that one? I did, yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, I will join, adjourn the meeting at 728. 7.30. 7.30. Yeah, I've written that down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, time for the big show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we're ready to start the uh, the city council. Okay, everybody ready? Okay. Gary, the regular meeting for Bissari City Council for April the 17th, 2018 is called to order. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. McKeever. Here. Meyer. Here. Flyball. Here. Tripka. Here. Sack. Foe. Here. Shot. Here. Before you, you have the minutes from the April 3rd, 2018 regular meeting. I need a motion to accept these minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Weyerbaugh, second by Mr. McKeever to accept the April 3rd, 2018 regular committee meeting minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. This is the time where we grant permission for the visitors to speak. Uh, first up for discussion this evening, we have USARA School Superintendent Kevin Kimmel. Kevin, if you would please step to the uh, podium, state your name and your address, if you would, please. Thank you. Kevin Kimmel, 1124 Hillcrest Drive. Um, good evening, President Love, members of council, elected officials, and Bussard's community members. I am the superintendent of Bussard City School District, and I appreciate the opportunity to address the memorandum of understanding before you tonight that would add a school resource officer to the Bussard City School District. It is no secret that we live living in an age where the safety and security of our children have become a an even stronger force for school districts across our country. Our district has dealt with several incidents this year and we're able to navigate the law enforcement requirements with the help of USARS Police Chief David Kepke and current school resource officer Joe Stahl. I provided you with an article that was written and received by many people in our community. This article shows that Officer Stahl, as a school resource officer, is much more than a law enforcement presence in our district. This shows that she's deeply involved in all aspects of not only our school safety plan, but also in the lives of many of our students. For those of you not aware, the Board of Education has agreed, should this measure be passed by council, to pay 75% or approximately $60,000 a year to bring a second SRO on board in our district. This is a major financial commitment by the board. It shows uh, they are committed to continually pro providing the safest learning and working environments for Bussaras students and staff. I would be remiss if I did not thank the citizens of Bussaras for supporting the safety service levy several years ago, which has allowed the Bussaras Police Department to provide a school resource officer at no cost to our district. The passage of this levy has been a shining example of the community's support to provide revenues that allow for the SRO program while maintaining staffing levels that has resulted an overall decline in criminal offenses in our community. I would like to thank City Council for their support for the School Resource Officer Program. Your action to maintain a budget that provides our district with a uniformed police officer shows your commitment to the safety and security of our most valuable resources, our students and staff. It is my hope, both as a superintendent and a father of three of our students, 
that you will uh, approve the MOU to continue your strong support of the USAR State School District and the safety and security of our students and staff. Again, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. I know that my comments here tonight are long overdue uh, for thanking this, the city council, uh, the city police department, and our entire community for the support um, and ever-growing partnership that will continue to allow our students to relentlessly pursue success in education and ultimately in their lives. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Any questions or comments regarding uh, what uh, Superintendent Kimmel's brought to us this evening. I got a comment. Certainly. Um, I believe I was one of the first generations of kids to have a school resource officer in the school building, and that was actually Officer Bursby um, when I was in high school. And um, I can say from personal experience that um, he was very revered by the students. I mean, uh, there was a lot of kids that would just come up just to chit chat with them, talk, and hang out. Um, so it kind of brought that relationship of police and help if I should say adolescents a little closer together so it seemed like it was a really great thing while I was in school it seems like officer stall has just kind of expounded on everything and made it even better so just speaking from personal experience it was really great when I was there and I appreciated it so any other questions or comments I guess I would I would comment that uh, uh, you're looking to add a new a new officer so that you could have a presence in each of the two buildings that uh, that the school district encompasses that is correct the uh, uh, Officer Stahl does an amazing job, but she's one person. Uh, we have two buildings with approximately 750 to 800 students in each building. Um, and so, you know, the, adding the second officer will allow us a, pre a daily presence in both buildings. And one that we have had uh, long conversations about how those two officers potentially would be interchangeable between the two buildings. Uh, you know, Chief Kepke and Officer Stahl have been to numerous Board of Education meetings over the last two to three months, and we've been discussing this issue. Uh, we've had executive sessions talking about school safety. We've had open public meetings. Uh, we've There's been a lot of work by our Board of Education. We have two members of our board here tonight uh, with us to show their support of the work that we've been doing collaboratively with the, with the police department. So there is a plan, if approved, to have two full-time school resource officers that would be able to do programming and education with the students uh, on a daily basis in both buildings. And really, you know, what's, what started the conversation was some, some threats to our district, uh, but really, if you look deep at what Officer Stahl's been able to do in our previous school resource officers, it's much more than a presence during a crisis situation. It's the daily interaction, the relationships that they build up to allow our kids the comfort to be able to, to go to a, a uniformed police officer and share their concerns and know that they have somebody they can they can resort to if there's problems. Uh, and also the, this, the training that, that our staff and students go through, um, it, 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 I feel very confident that we're as better prepared today than we ever have been if something were to, to happen. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay, we'll oh, uh, we're going to, this is going to go into committee for us to, uh, in order to uh, be able to take it further than this step uh, this evening of, of you presenting it. So uh, we will definitely let you know when those, that committee meeting is going to be, and I assume that's going to be Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. So uh, we'll, we'll have our committee, and that needs to go into finance, finance committee. Okay, and uh, we'll uh, need a motion then to put it into finance. So, so is that Mr. Trooper or Mr. Fung? Mr. Fung? Mr. McKeever? All those in favor of putting it into Finance Committee, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll continue the conversation then. Are any of the, the school board members, if you would like to come up and add something to it, we'd certainly like to hear from you to know that uh, uh, what you feel about the, uh, the request. Your name and address, please. John Kime, 1027 Roger Street. Um, as you guys know, just turning on the TV, um, school safety is uh, at the center of a lot of conversations right now. And uh, it's scary that we even had to have a lot of the conversations we did, but it's a, re a reality. Um, and I, just thinking of how we have to manage the school's finances, as you guys have to manage the city finances, 
it is a tough choice, but we felt like we well, we felt like it was an easy choice, but we we have to deal with financial, I, I guess, decisions as well. That I mean, for some it seems simple, but for some it might not. So I, I just really appreciate the partnership we have with you guys, and I would really appreciate your approval of this issue. Thank you very much. Your name and address, please. Tracy Wetterow, 1521 Avenue. Um, in addition to what John said, it, it was not a difficult decision at all. We will put no limit on the amount of money we'll spend to keep our students and staff safe. Uh, but beyond that, with Officer Joe, I mean, she just does an amazing job with our kids. Beyond just her presence there as a police officer, but just the relationships she builds, and with our staff as well. Um, they feel very com very confident with her, very comfortable <coughs> with her, and we want to see that grow. We want to see another officer come into the building um, and hopefully instill that in, so that we, we have somebody there in both buildings all the time. We are very, very pleased with how this is going. We really, really appreciate your support and, and would like to see this grow. Um, as a former teacher, I taught in this district for 30 years. There, there's nothing more that you can do for our students than make them feel safe and secure, and they don't always feel that at home. So we want them to feel that way during the school day. And it's very, very important that for their learning environment, for them to feel that way. So we appreciate your support and consideration in this matter, and hope that you will uh, help us out with this. Thank you. Thank you very much. We also have two administrators. You think I'm going to let you guys get by with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen, if you would, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was, uh, your name and address, oh, please. You're Jake Anderson, I'm on the 1600 West Side. Um, I'm Associate Principal of Usiris in grades 6 to 8, and I probably echo the same um, thoughts that, that Officer Joe has been an outstanding resource for us. And I, I guess I would speak selfishly. Uh, there's times that I go back to her office and talk to her about issues that occur not only within a building, but in the community. And the uh, you know, reality is, our school is basically a, a, a small snapshot of what our community is. And uh, the same issues that happen out in the community happen within our building walls. So to have a resource officer certainly makes sense. And to improve that and move it to a secondary building uh, and to the elementary building certainly makes sense. So I certainly hope that we have your support in, uh, in having this uh, heard. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin Foreman, 1565 West Southern Avenue and neighbor to Mr. Dennison. Uh, also uh, neighboring with Mr. Dennison at the Bushire Secondary School. I'm the associate principal dealing with students at high school level from grades 9 through 12. I would echo really just uh, all of the comments of our board members, as well as uh, Mr. Kimmel and the other administrator here this evening. Uh, again, none of us wish that this was a conversation we would need to have. Um, we're far past that issue, and uh, while we are all at one juncture or another responsible for the finances of our city, uh, our school district, and uh, deciding what things are important and, and what needs to be kind of prioritized. Uh, I cannot think of really anything of, of more uh, urgency than again the safety of our school children and uh, staff that work here in the city school districts. Again, Chief Kepke and, and Officer Stahl have done uh, remarkable jobs as the other officers have as well throughout the last years. As Mr. Folk mentioned, it's been more than just a couple of years <laughs> uh, we've had uh, some resource officers working with our district and uh, their service not only to the community but to the school district is greatly appreciated thank you and since we don't get an opportunity too often uh, officer Stahl, is there anything you would like to add to the conversation i know you're hiding back there <laughs> Joe Stahl, 692 Usiris Nevada Road. 
I was not prepared to speak <laughs> at all tonight. Um, I'm flattered by the things that have been said. Uh, but I am one person, and uh, I can only be in one building at one time. A majority of our major issues happen at the middle school and high school level, which unfortunately means I don't get to spend a lot of time with our elementary school students. Uh, with the D.A.R.E. grant that we received, it's put me at the elementary school to teach D.A.R.E. and do some more educational things, and I love it. And I would really like to grow our D.A.R.E. program and make it even bigger. Right now, I'm just doing kindergarten. I'd like to do at least three grade levels next year. Um, I need some help. So uh, I can't be everywhere all the time, and on top of teaching and just being there and doing the trainings, um, and then handling the incidents that come in, which are frequent, um, I'm stretched. So uh, this would be, uh, you can't learn if you don't feel safe. So I think it's, it's paramount. And the fact that the school is confident enough to um, believe in the brand that we've created through our SRO program, that they want to commit to taking from their budget um, to add a second SRO, uh, it speaks volumes. Like Mr. Foreman said, this isn't a conversation that we want to have. This isn't something that we want to face, but it's the reality of the world. So um, I'm flattered. Again, thank you for the support from you guys as well. Would you mind if I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, simple. And uh, ultimately, I, the answer is already there. But um, in your belief, will duplicating this in the elementary school make it easier transitioning these children into the high school level and making it where maybe these things don't happen because they're already in, in a sense ingrained with it in the elementary level. Absolutely, so um, this is my, I, I've been in the schools for two and a half years, um, and like I said, a majority of our problems and our, our issues and um, the desperate need is already there at the middle school and high school level. It would be amazing to spend more time at the elementary school level before there becomes that desperate need. Um, a lot of my job is just touching base with students who maybe no one touches base with them besides their teachers every day and just being there so that you know whatever they see on TV or, or they see on the street um, maybe isn't necessarily true because they know Joe and um, Joe smiles and he gives high fives. <laughs> so it would just, it's a desperate need at the middle school and high school level for a presence. It would be great to do more on the front of education and experience at a, a younger level so they get that taste before they get to the point where they have the problems. Um, I do charge students with crimes and it is the worst part of my job. Um, but what you don't see is the 60% of the, the interactions I have with students that could have been charged but aren't because I have a relationship with that student and we can either stop something from happening or they can come to me and vent frustrations, or they can talk to me about something that's going on outside of school even that we can take care of, that we can handle, that we can pull from other resources to try and get them the help that they need. Um, so that's a huge part of my job, is the part that doesn't get um, Yes. Well, thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else that can't sit down? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else want to address council on this subject this evening? If not, I'm going to let you lead right into it, then you can finish up with this subject and then go into your, you're the next person I'm calling up anyway. Okay, should I do it from here? Or? You can do it right from here. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Kimmel, and thank you everyone from the DeSara Schools that came here tonight. Uh, I appreciate so much the opportunity our department has had to partner with the school district. And I will say on a personal level, uh, the greatest satisfaction I have in my job over the course of 29 years has been seeing the impact that we can have, as Joe just mentioned, where we can be preventative and proactive in somebody's life rather than waiting and reacting when it things escalate, it's, and uh, it doesn't necessarily happen in the walls of the school. We encounter people more often on the streets, and, I, and standing right next to Mr. Kimmel, there's Captain Greg Stevens, who worked in the schools, uh, Officer Bursey worked in the schools, 
I'll, I'll pick on Captain Stevens if I forget anybody, but in this, over the years, we've had John Stanley, John Beal, Captain Stevens, uh, Kurt Bursby, and uh, and, uh, and, most, and they were promoted, and in their promotion, uh, Officer Stahl became a school resource officer. I'm gonna ask uh, James to stand up, Jimmy Mata. <coughs> Jimmy has a, a burning desire to work in the schools, work, and you see the, the smile on his face. <laughs> he, has a, he has a glowing smile. I think uh, the kids in the schools are gonna appreciate his presence. He's going to training this summer and uh, he will learn the ins and outs of being a school resource officer. He doesn't know he's getting into yet. <laughs> but uh, over the years, uh, we used to have, I, I speak about being reactive. When, when I started in the 1980s, before we thought about uh, interacting with school children, we had a juvenile detective. What does a detective do? Wait until a crime is reported and then investigates it, collects evidence. Uh, and working with kids in the juvenile justice system is totally different than adults. Uh, the terminology is different. Um, and it's about growing and improving. It's not about punishing, okay? Without getting into uh, academic discussion about it, but kids deserve a second, third, and fourth chance and to be worked with and actually ha having the chance to work with them before things escalate until, until a serious crime. So that's where the transition actually started from juvenile detective work to proactive uh, engagement with youth in the D.A.R.E. program and then the school resource officers. So I appreciate you remembering your school day. What, was, when, what year was that? Uh, let's see, that would have been 15 years ago for me. And actually, uh, Officer Stevens, when he first came to the force, was my uh, D.A.R.E. officer in elementary school. So because Captain Stanley kind of stepped away and Officer Stevens stepped in. so. I watched the transition happen before my very eyes. So, and they've all been wonderful. Like I said, you said about the smile with Mr. Mata back there. That was a lot of what helped Mr. Bursby, I think, get to high school. Was he always had a smile every time he came up to him? And uh, and to take a step further, we're all better police officers for the opportunity because now we have a different uh, uh, a different approach, maybe, or a different way of reading the situation, having had the chance to work with kids in the schools. And then we say, these are for the ones that aren't school resource officers. Maybe they were, or maybe they, their experience rubs off on the other officers. Like I said, for us, for us as students, it really it, it broke that bridge for the relationship between us and police officers. I mean, ultimately, you always think police officer when you're a young kid, I'm in trouble, something, you know. And it just it broke that bridge right there and made it to where, like you said, it made us feel comfortable to talk to them about anything, whether it be something that's going on wrong or in our lives or something we witnessed. But it did make that a lot. Like I said, I could not say enough good things about it, personally. And uh, the, uh, most recently, the mayor and I attended the meeting with the leader and me. And again, uh, Mr. Kimmel, do you want to comment on the difference in behavior at the schools in the last half dozen years because of things like the leader and me and the integration of policing <coughs> in the schools and working with the kids? Mr. Kimmel, if you could. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anytime I can brag about our school system, I can do that. So appreciate the lead in. Uh, this is we just completed our third year of leader meeting, and, and it is character ed. And um, it's providing a foundation that we're not going to see the benefits of it until years down the road. But it's definitely worth the investment. And none of that would have been possible without the commitment from our community. The expenses of that program have been over $100,000. Zero dollars have come out of general fund lines. 100% debt donated from our community businesses that believe in the future of ESARS. And we have seen a state decline in the number of incidents, referrals. If I recall roughly off the top of my head, we've seen like 700 less referrals in the elementary school from the beginning of the leader me to where it is now, an annual reduction. So, you know, unfortunately, um, people ask me all the time, do you have a drug problem in your schools? And I answer that confidently by saying, no, we do not. But what we do have is the fallout of the epidemic in our community. The kids that come into our building are dealing with great trauma in the homes that, that 
there's not drugs in the schools. But what's in the schools is the fallout from the drug problem that happened. That's why we have to maintain a strong police force and be proactive and see consistently a steady decline look like we've seen here recently uh, with the uh, increased um, police presence in our community to be able to do things like be proactive. And that's what that's what we need for this community. So thanks for leaving. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I was uh, going to be brief, so uh, I bet that's the note to stop on right there because it's about the kids uh, being uh, proactive is one of the uh, seven parts of the leader in me, by the way. And, and, the end, and the end of it is sharpen the saw, and I think we as a community can sharpen the saw with your support, council, and I'll ask for that and refer you to the uh, statistical report, which just the first quarter of 2017 versus the first quarter of 2018, uh, even though we've had a we had to request help from the schools to fund another officer because we're short officers. And uh, in uh, the statistical area of uh, calls, we had 2,706 calls for service in the first quarter of 2017. Ooh, excuse me. You, you will find that on, it's printed on both sides of the paper. So Nature Statistics 2018, 2,706. First quarter of 2017, we had 2,799, so uh, you can see that we're down slightly on calls for service. Incident type are uh, police reports for things such as traffic accidents through the most serious offenses of assaults or felony assaults and your larceny and burglaries. And the uh, 2018 figure in the first quarter is 606 in 2017 first quarter we were 824. Uh, I will mention that some of the reduction is the result of having fewer police officers generating work, but it is still a trend of the community being a safer place to live. Uh, we have seen that the one area we've seen increases are uh, non-injury traffic fender bender collisions. We're up uh, about 20% in that area. Um, everything else was pretty steady. We had a reduction in traffic stops, though, by, by a significant margin because we had fewer officers on patrol because, of, because we need more staffing to make traffic stops. So, watch your speed, Mr. Pope. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me. So that's fine. I, I'll be the example. If, if we're not laughing, we're crying. I, uh, I, 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 so. uh, in my uh, almost 20 years of driving, I've never. I didn't stop you. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I did make a traffic Your stop side. the other day. The Madam President saw me making a traffic I stop. I saw it. Um, I you know. here? <laughs> 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 no. It was the U turn he did in front of me. <laughs> the uh, also in front of council members tonight are Bucyrus Safety Town 2018 registrations. Bucyrus Safety Town is a program for all children entering kindergarten living in the city of Bucyrus. The program will be 9 to 11.30 in the morning or 12.30 to 3 in the afternoon for five days, June 11th through June 15th. That's Monday to Friday at the Bucyrus Elementary School. The, it, the program is first come, first register for 40 in the morning program, 40 in the afternoon. So get your registrations in as soon as possible for incoming kindergarten children that live in the city of Bucyrus. <coughs> Bucyrus firefighters, police officers, teachers, and special guests will interact with your child daily. Your child will receive instruction about personal safety, issues such as stranger danger, pedestrian safety, fire safety, railroad safety, bicycle safety, car and bus safety will be presented in a fun and age-appropriate manner. And Officer Stahl and Officer Mata will be there some of the uh, Activities. The police day typically is on Monday and the fire day is on Wednesday this year. And it will be a lot of fun. So uh, if, if you would, make some more copies business people and, and make those available to your customers. And uh, I'll send some with the school folks tonight. You can make some more copies. Although Mrs. Lipscomb and Sarah Lipscomb probably are taking care of that. We just had a safety town meeting tonight to plan. And this is the first the uh, application will be available. So. And we always, when we're talking about Safety Town, we always have to say, again, a special thank you to Sarah Lipscomb. This was one of her projects when she was 
Was she a freshman in high school? I want to say seventh or eighth. Seventh or eighth grade. To get this started. And uh, you've been able to continue it, and it, it is a great thing. It's Talk about kids having a lot of fun uh, and learning at the same time. That certainly is what it is. Uh, uh, funds in the, that were donated to Safety Tower, we had about a $3,000 investment that was approved to improve the playground at Bucyrus Elementary School with the Safety Town uh, uh, landscape uh, mm -hmm. added to the playground, so that'll be a great addition to the school. And uh, I think I covered everything else in, in that report. So okay. if there's any other questions. Does anyone have any questions for the issue? Just a comment, I will confirm again the Leader Me program. I actually got the first hand witness that. I got invited to one of their luncheons at the elementary school and to see kids excited about doing things that are developing leaders in them, the things that they're doing is very refreshing and the teachers there are doing a wonderful job with that. So yes, they are. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to continue on with our council meeting, but if there's anyone in the audience that doesn't want to stick around for the whole rest of the council meeting, we do not take any offense if you want to get up and leave at this point in time. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to stay or not. <laughs> but we're staying. <laughs> thank you all for coming, though. Yes, thank you very much. For, for just a moment here, we're just getting through that uh, uh, Mrs. Barbara Bush passed away, and uh, a former first lady. We all knew that her health was was very precarious and uh, something that they were anticipating. But just a moment of silence for her. May she rest in peace. Okay, continuing then, uh, let's move to communications and petitions. We have a letter from the Roberts Festival. Um, two letters from the Roberts Festival. Um, the uh, both made in April 10 address to City Council from the Bucyrus uh, Roberts Festival. Uh, dear members of Council, the 51st annual Bucyrus Roberts Festival will be held in the streets of beautiful downtown Bucyrus on August 16, 17, and 18, 2018. We respectfully request the following streets be closed at 12.01 a.m. on Wednesday, August 15, 2018, to allow the amusement company the ability to start laying cable on all streets to remain closed until 8 a.m. on Sunday, August 19, 2018, or as soon as cleanup is complete. Sandusky Avenue from Mary Street to City Hall, Warren Street from Walnut to Poplar, Rensselaer Street from Walnut to Poplar, Mansfield Street from Walnut to Poplar, Charles Street from East Alley South to just east of the United Bank driveway. We are also uh, requesting the following uh, use of the City Hall lobby and the north and east parking lots for the craft show and the art show, as in previous years. A parking ban on East Rensselaer Street from Walnut to Lane on Saturday, August 18, to allow parking for the visiting Queens. Rensselaer Street from Sandusky Avenue to Poplar Street closure at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, August 14, for replacement of the Rensselaer Street stage as in previous years. Uh, parades are scheduled at 7 p.m. on Thursday and Friday, August 16 and 17, as well as uh, 4 p.m. on Saturday, August 18, 2018, a parade route will be the same as years past from Perry Street to Center Street. We are requesting the following closures two hours before parade times. River Street from Sandusky to Tiffin Street, Perry Street from Walnut to Broadway Alley, North Sandusky from Mary Street to Irving Street, Mary Street from Poplar to Walnut Street, Liberty Street from Walnut to Poplar Street, Center Street from Walnut to Poplar, Lucas Street from Walnut to Poplar, and South Sandusky from City Hall to Oakwood Avenue. Your continued support and cooperation are very much appreciated. Without your support, the Bucyrus Broadway Festival would not be the success that it has been for the last 21 <coughs> years. We look forward to seeing you all at the opening ceremony at noon on Thursday, August 16th, on the FDB named Rensselaer Street stage. Respectfully submitted, Amanda Myers, President, Broadway Festival Incorporated Board of Directors, and Larry West, Director of the Bruceyrus Broadway Festival. Uh, I'll go ahead and read the second letter. Um, dear members of Council, on March 7, 7 uh, 2017, with Resolution 209-2017, the Bucyrus City Council authorized the Service Safety Director to enter into an agreement with Broadway Festival Incorporated to provide necessary safety forces and cleaning services at no charge for the 2017 and 2018 Broadway Festivals. 
At that time, Mayor Jeff Reeser had suggested that the city enter into a permanent agreement going forward, utilizing a portion of the VET tax money to cover the extra expense of safety courses and the street department charges. The 2017 council opted to do a two-year agreement that is renewed annually to allow the Broadworth Festival the ability to plan ahead accordingly. Broadworth Festival Incorporated was able to pass the cost savings on to local nonprofit vendors, reducing their fees from $30 per foot plus $60 for water and electric to a flat fee of $100 to cover expenses. We have also been able to provide much needed upgrades to our infrastructure of water and electric distribution, as well as a dramatic improvement on our safety and security plan. The Broadworth Festival wishes to thank the City of Bucyrus for realizing that together we are partners who have the same goal in mind. That goal is promoting Bucyrus to the world and, and attracting visitors to come enjoy all that we have to offer here. It is our, it is our hope, much as it is yours, that these visitors will also see Bucyrus as a place that you could live, work, and place a business. The Broadworth Festival Committee worked diligently to make the most of this partnership last year, taking on some responsibilities that the city previously handled, such as setting barricades, establishing daily safety briefings with safety forces, and having the festival leadership dump garbage Saturday morning to save overtime costs. We anticipate doing the same this year. We ask that you again consider continuing this partnership, allowing the Broadway Festival and the City of Cyrus to, to promote the good in our community. Respectfully submitted, Veronica Hildreth, Vice President, Broadway Festival Incorporated Board of Directors, and Larry West, Director of Broadway Cyrus Festival. Those have to be referred to committee. Okay, those need to go into Health and Safety Committee. So I need a motion, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Cloak. All those in say, favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Madam President. Yes. Uh, just, I, I did go a little bit at the end there. Um, yes, the festival did uh, dump the garbage on Saturday morning. And I would like to say I personally was one of those people that dumped that garbage in the back of the garbage truck. And those men deserve a lot of credit because that's a very nasty job. <laughs> <laughs> to say the very least. Yes. After uh, roughly three hours, I had to go home and take a complete shower and throw away my clothes. Okay. <laughs> okay, that does happen. Uh, I forgot one speaker we had for this evening, Ruben. Pardon me. <laughs> if you would yeah, step to the uh, microphone, please, and introduce yourself to the rest of the council. No problem. Your name and address. Thank you. Reardon McLean, 469 North 5th Street, Upper Sandusky. Uh, thank you, President Love, and members of council, and, and those of you here. I'm, uh, just here by means of uh, introduction, I'm, my name is Reardon McLean. I'm the state representative for the district. I was appointed in January, and I've, I've met a lot of you, but I'm very looking forward to meeting the rest of you and, and working with you to, to make sure that this district is taken care of. And I want to commend you <clears throat> on what you're doing here, um, just sitting through this committee meeting tonight. It's very professional and organized, um, and commend you for, for the things that you have in motion to, to improve this city and uh, good job and keep on it. So, um, just to be brief, uh, in that I'm born and raised in Upper Sandusky, Ohio. Currently live there with my wife and, and three children. I've been on the job since January, and I'm looking forward to, to continuing moving forward um, beyond this year. But just just briefly, um, some some topics that are in Columbus. Uh, there's a lot of topics that are in Columbus that, that would impact this area. Um, most notably, uh, the Capitol bill was just passed. Um, through both the Senate and the House, impacting Bucyrus, uh, which I'm sure you're, you're aware of, but there will be funding from the state in terms of the capital bill appropriations improvements for the uh, Bicentennial Arch Project um, and then the Shines Park stage. Um, so I look forward to working with you. As that gets rolled out, the governor signed it on uh, the 30th of last month. So as we move forward here uh, into I don't have a time frame yet, but hopefully in, in by June we'll, we'll get some of those payments uh, distributed out, um, and I'll, I'll work with the mayor and, and the city council here, making sure we get that as quick as possible so we can use those funds to, to help downtown here. Um, also, the only other, uh, my first bill, uh, actually, to introduce as a new legislator here in Columbus uh, was uh, to uh, rename U.S. Route 30 here, uh, the Harry L. Martin Memorial Highway. Um, so we're, we're in the process of working through the Transportation Committee down in Columbus to, to just get a segment of US 30 here around Cyrus to honor a, a, a great resident of the city um, and uh, properly honor him and the service that he gave this country. Uh, so the, the constituent here in, in Cyrus, Doug Wilson, 
brought this to my attention and I'm happy to introduce it at the state level and hopefully we can get that all the way through and, and, and honor him and also uh, inspire the next generation of servicemen and women um, to defend this nation. So um, that's real briefly, um, as I said, I'm before to get to know all of you and I'm honored to be here, so thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Anyone, quick question or not? None? No, I do. You do? No, not for, not for him, but for the general family. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in, Representative. And you are, too, more than welcome to leave if you don't want to stay. <laughs> okay, I, I have a little bit of a rest of the council meeting. Uh, I, I would just ask the second letter of the Batmore Festival, does that have anything to do with finance? Or would it? Yeah, it's a typical finance. Wait, didn't you put it in finance? Yeah, health and safety. Okay. Well, I think we are already the. We're in a two-year. Yeah. We're in a two-year agreement right now that yeah. was all approved previously. We don't need to put that back in the committee, do we? We're in year two. We're of the in year two of the agreement. The it is. Oh. I guess I didn't pick up on that. No, Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh. Oh, the, the last sentence. We can ask that you can consent. Okay. Okay, so we'll put that into, uh, uh, that'll have to go into health and safety and finance. Okay, do I have a motion, please? Move. Second. Motion by Mr. Fote, second by Mr. Truca to place the uh, Broadhurst Festival, uh, basically the uh, safety forces and cleaning services into the, into the health and safety and finance committees. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay, we're done with that. Okay, standing committee reports. Uh, <coughs> Who gets us off to the start here? Finance Committee. Mr. Weyerbaugh. Yeah. Are you up to reading this evening? <coughs> I think I'm going to have to be. Okay. <coughs> the Star City Council Joint Regular Committees uh, met Thursday, April 5th, 2018, uh, and began at 6.01 p.m. Uh, members present were Kevin Myers, Dan Weyerbaugh, Bruce Truca, Monica Sack, Doug Fult, and Andrew Schott. The Star City Joint Committee's uh, was called to order by SAC at 6.01 p.m. Uh, the public participation was Kurt Fankhauser, 1675 South Sandusky Avenue, who spoke about a proposal under consideration for the city to purchase the former ODOT garage on East Durban Street, sell its street garage and water distribution building, and consolidate those services at the old ODOT, ODOT site. He suggested the city construct new buildings at that site and fund the cost via residents' utility bills by using the proceeds from the sale of the city's existing buildings to improve the city parks. Mayor Jeff Reeser characterized Fankhauser's comparison of the tennis courts at All Miller Park to facilities in East Cleveland as racist, which Fankhauser denied. Council President Sislove terminated the exchange. The order of committee business, the Finance Committee, uh, began at 6.07 p.m with various appropriations. Uh, oh, wait a second, I'll cut off target. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the Desar City Council Regular Joint Committee Finance Committee began at 6.07 p.m. Uh, members Dan Weyerbaugh, Kevin Myers, Andrew Schock, and Monica Sack chair. Uh, various appropriations, Audi Auditor Joyce Schiffer, reported that the following appropriations need to be made from unappropriated street construction maintenance and repair, repair funds to 210 street construction maintenance and repair slash 7610 street construction maintenance and repair slash 23 contractual services $3,750 for stormwater long-term control plan engineering services. B, from unappropriated waterworks funds to 701 waterworks backslash 
7525 distribution slash 23 contractual services, $3,750 for stormwater long-term control plan engineering services. C, from unappropriated sewage disposal funds to 720 sewage disposal slash 7540 sewers and drains slash 23 contractual services, $13,250 for stormwater long-term control plan engineering services. From unappropriated stormwater <coughs> funds to 760 <coughs> stormwater utility slash 7545 stormwater utility slash 23 contractual services, $6,250 for stormwater long-term control engineering services. E, from unappropriated waterworks funds to 701 waterworks slash 7525 distribution, 25 capital outlay, $10,086 <coughs> for pump repair. F, from unappropriated street construction maintenance and repair funds to 210 street construction maintenance and repair slash 7610 street construction maintenance and repair 25 capital outlay, $200,000 for a Southern Avenue sanitary sewer trunk line change order. Shock made a motion to request legislation making the appropriations with second by Myers. Motion passed by voice vote. Amendment of resolution number 205, 2017, Southern Avenue sanitary sewer trunk line. Schiffer explained that the original resolution did not include an additional 10% for change orders and that a $200,000 change order for the paving of Southern Avenue brings the total cost of the trunk line project to $2,312,527.72. The resolution needs to be amended to change the not to exceed amount to that figure. Shock made a motion to request legislation so amending resolution number 205-217 with a second by Myers. Motion passed by voice vote. Repeal, replace of ordinance number 8-2018, employee manpower seasonal health. Research suggested the administration would like to cease the paying sick time and holiday pay part-time seasonal workers, which cost the city $5,250.87 in 2017. Municipalities are permitted to withhold such pay to start to part-timers under the Ohio Revised Code. There are presently no part-time employees working for the city. Wireball made a motion to request legislation to repeal and replace ordinance number 8-2018. 2018 to make the change with a second by Myers. Motion passed by voice vote. Number five, repeal replace of ordinance number 9-2018, billet solid waste. Reeser noted that the city is look, looking to raise solid waste rates for the first time since 2004. And to minimize the rate hike, the administration seeks to reconfigure how solid waste employees are paid in the following manner. Okay, so solid waste uh, right now has one equipment operator driver at 100% solid waste, one equipment operator driver at 45% solid waste, 28% streets, and 27 sewer and drains, two equipment operators drivers floaters at 45% solid waste, 28% streets, 27% sewers and drains, and two laborers at 100% solid waste. And two skilled laborers at 20% solid waste, 70% streets, and 10% sewers or drains, or 20% solid waste, 40% streets, and 40% streets, sewer and drains. I don't know, I lost me some of them. <laughs> but I know what you want to do, but I'm a little bit lost. So uh, well, anyhow. I mean, in the paragraph, you're going to talk about that. Oh, okay. Is it going to make sense here? Right. Yeah, well, I don't want to confuse anybody out here because I'm definitely confused. So, <laughs> L, uh, wastewater, sewers and drains, <coughs> two equipment operators, two skilled laborers. 
flavors. Service foreman Jeff Dunn explained that sanitation routes are also being changed. Schiffer suggested that the billet should better reflect the departments for which employees are working and that in the skilled trades labor category under section H, second option more closely achieves that. Under section L, okay. Under Section L, laborers would be described as skilled. Wireball made a motion to request legislation to repeal and replace Ordis 9-2018 as outlined above with skilled laborers under Section H being paid in the 20-40-40 configuration and with all other request, requested changes. As a second by shop, motion passed by voice vote. I just want to interject here for a minute because that was so confusing. All we're doing is, is shuffle. Uh, we're, we're taking money from uh, would it be sewer and drains and using it so that we're not taking so much from solid waste so that we don't have to raise that because the these citizens. employees do work in because both, they do do that yeah. in both departments so we're just apportioning their wages and benefits yeah. where they should be cor uh, <coughs> correctly reflecting what is actually taking place so that's what all that is about. We're just kind of doing it, the, the legal mumbo jumbo here. So uh, number six is uh, amendment of city income tax code. Uh, State House Bill 49. Legislation is required to amend chapter 189 of the city income tax code to adopt certain municipal income tax provisions that are also adopted within House Bill 49 to Authorize state officials to collect and administer municipal net profit taxes retroactive to January 1st, 2018. The provisions have been challenged in court and the case is on appeal, but that has not enjoyed, enjoined the provisions enactment. Shock made a motion to request legislation so amending chapter 189 of the city income tax with a second by Myers, motion passed by voice vote. SAC recess the finance committee at 6 37 p.m. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments regarding this finance committee? Meeting? Just one small correction in paragraph four, uh, where it states there are presently no part time employees working for the city. That should be part time seasonal employees. Okay, that's true. Anything else? I was just uh, wanted to say real quick, reiterating what Mr. Wireball was saying, uh, discussion of the distribution of the funds for their, their wages is ultimately too because the way that we, the way they do it right now, if they write down their time for working in the street department when they were supposed to be a solid waste, it just carries over the pay. It does not carry the benefits and everything else. So this is what aligns everything to where it's all. So that's the reason. Okay, I need a motion then to amend the minutes here to in paragraph four to make a part-time seasonal employee. So moved. Second. That was Mr. Schock and Mr. Myers. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. Moving on. Final committee met at 6.38 p.m. Members present, Bruce Truca, Monica Sack, and Kevin Myers, acting chair. Item number one, conditional use for multifamily housing in R3 district. The City Planning Commission recommends that section 1163.04 of the Besides Codified Ordinance be amended to allow multifamily housing in the urban neighborhood residential R3 district as a conditional use. Zoning Administrator John Rostash explained that the recommendation stems from a zoning amendment application submitted by the owner of the property at 902 Whetstone Street. Law Director Rob Ratliff detailed five minimum conditions to be met for the conditional use to be granted. Concerned with the establishment of a build to front property line, consistent height requirement, side yard requirement, off street parking, and engineering plans. Truca made a motion to schedule a public hearing on the matter for 5 30 p.m. on Thursday, May 10, with a second by SAC. Motion passed. Draft legislation will be posted in the zoning office and the public notified of the hearing by April 10, 30 days prior. Number two, Myers Recess Platy at 6 48 p.m. Questions or comments regarding that meeting? The um, draft legislation is posted in the zoning office. And where else? Um, it's downstairs. downstairs. <coughs> and we do have that public hearing scheduled for the 10th. Yes. Downstairs. Yeah. 
it's all in there. May 10th is the public hearing. Moving on, Health and Safety Committee. Health and Safety Committee at 6.48 p.m. to 7.08 p.m. Members present. Mark McKeever, Bruce Truca, Andrew Schock, and Kevin Myers Chair. I'm sorry, that was members. Members present were Bruce Truca, Andrew Schock, and Kevin Myers Chair. Item on traffic map changes. The Traffic Commission has requested <laughs> approval of the following amendments to the traffic control map. A, four-way stops at East Mansfield and Spring Streets, East Mansfield and Poplar Streets, and East Mary and Poplar Streets. B, Quaker Road, a 55-mile-an-hour speed zone from State Route 4 to Tiffin Street. C, South Sadusky Avenue, a 45-mile-an-hour speed zone from Mount Zion Road to Beale Avenue. D, Plymouth Street, a 45-mile-an-hour speed zone from East Irving Street to the US 30 ramp. The commission seeks to suspend the 90 day trial of the four way stops there as there have been no reported problems at the intersections. Following discussion on the timing of the changes, Shock made a motion to request legislation making the requested amendments to the traffic control map with a second by Truca. Motion passed by voice vote. Item two disposal of ad circulars. Law Director Rob Ratliff distributed three ordinances from across the country dealing with the prohibition or control of ad circulars. He noted that the two prohibiting the dissemination were rejected by the courts on constitutionality grounds, while a third dictating where they can and cannot be placed passed muster. It was noted that residents have the legal right to ask that unsolicited materials not be placed on their property. Information on how residents may proceed will be publicized via the city's website and access TV. Questions were raised about how effectively the council could enforce an ordinance. The item was tabled. Item three, Myers recess, the Health and Safety Committee at 7 p.m. Any questions or comments regarding the discussion, Mr. Foe? Just to put it out there, I've received multiple people coming up to me out in public. I've actually received an email or two that the four-way stops are, they don't like them at all. Um, a lot of complaints of uh, almost getting hit. I've had two or three separate instances. I have not personally, my wife actually personally had to stop one day though, so somebody coming down Tiffany to the Mary Street intersection didn't clean her out because he did not slow down, stop, or anything. So I don't know if the stop sign would use or stop light would be a difference for that case. Um, but here again, just to voice that, but there are a lot of people that are very dis disgruntled about they're not real kosher with it. Um, I threw out the idea of possibly maybe putting up some, I know we have the stop ahead signs, but maybe if we can somehow incorporate a flashing stop sign, flashing stop ahead sign, something to that effect just to draw more attention. I know it's a little more money, but if it will help to smooth things over and make this transition easier, then just put that out there. Mr. Chairman? Yes. We, we've had not one complaint. No one's called us, just had positive comments. I mean, I, those people are, you know, I don't know where they're coming from, but we've had nothing but positive comments. We haven't had one single complaint about us. That's, which is my rebuttal every time, but okay. All right. I just want to make sure that I'm calling out there. I'm call us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Were you saying yes or you no, I, I, smiling? No. Okay. That was a smile. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, moving on. Uh, public lands and uh, buildings. <laughs> yeah. Back to you, Mr. Weirbaum. Yeah, that's kind of why I was. So anyhow, uh, Public uh, Lands and Buildings Committee uh, met Thursday, April 5th, 2018. Uh, and we began at 7.08 p.m. Uh, members present were Bruce Truca, Doug Pope, and myself, Chair. Uh, former ODOT facility on West Irving Street, ODOT has approached the city about purchasing ODOT's former facility <coughs> on West Irving Street for a dollar. The site could be used to consolidate operations now in the water distribution building and streets garage, which have been appraised for a total of $1 million. The administration estimates that could see a net gain of $262,100 after the consolidation is complete. One of the consolidation would involve sale of the water distribution building and using those proceeds to renovate three buildings and fixing the fence on West Irving. While phase two would involve sale of the streets garage and construction of a new building on West Irving. Council members were given a tour of the various buildings and arrangements were made for those who couldn't make it to take another tour or view a video. The matter was continued until all council members have had a chance to view the properties a special Public Lands and Buildings Committee meeting was scheduled for 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, April 17th, to take up the issue. 
Trucker made a motion to request draft legislation authorizing the administration to enter into a contract with ODOT for purchase of the agency's property on West Irving Street for $1 with a second by vote. Motion passed by voice vote. Wireball recessed the Public Lands and Buildings Committee at 7.29 p.m. <coughs> Take us to the end of the All right, and public participation after that. Uh, Kurt Fankhauser, 1675 South Sandusky Avenue, attempted to continue the discussion from the earlier period of public participation. Love determined that he was being disruptive and asked the sergeant at arms to escort Fankhauser from council chambers. Wireball asked for motion to adjourn the joint regular committees. Motion by Pope and second by Myers to join at 7.31 p.m. Motion passed. Thank you very much. Moving on, uh, Public Lands and Buildings Committee met in a special session on Tuesday, April the 17th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. Mr. Weirbaugh, the would you give us a verbal report on the meeting this evening? Yeah, but I didn't take very good notes, I guess. But uh, the special public lands and buildings committee met, uh, and with Mayor Jeff Reeser called to discuss the former ODOT facility on West Irving Street. Uh, members present were uh, Bruce Trucker, Doug Pope, Mark McKeever, and myself, Chair. I called the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we discussed the purchase of the former ODOT facility. Uh, we did have Doug vote a uh, motion to go ahead with that, and Bruce took a second to get all were in favor. Uh, and we went to the purchase of property on East Mansfield Street and Penn Avenue. Uh, law director gave a summation of uh, the situation there and said that uh, we did have the funding available. Uh, and. I'm not sure who made the motion. Yeah, Mark made the motion. Oh, no, Bruce did. Bruce, oh, Bruce did. I'm sure Bruce did. And Mark second, and uh, we approved that. So, uh, to, uh, legislation for that. Uh, then I adjourn the meeting at 7.28 p.m. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions or comments regarding that meeting? Okay, moving on. The Finance Committee met in special session on Tuesday, April the 7th, 2018, <coughs> not at 6.45 p.m., I believe it was 7.28, 7.32? 7.32. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Almost you? started at 7.20. We started at 7.22, and the members uh, present were Dan Weirball, Kevin Myers, and Andrew Schock. Uh, the Special Finance Committee meeting was called by Mayor Jeff Reeser to discuss the purchase of the former ODOT facility. Uh, and I called the meeting at uh, 7.32. Uh, we, dis we discussed the purchase of the ODOT facility and it's okay, I can't, I can't remember. Uh, Shock and Myers on the ODOT facility. Yeah. Okay, and uh, that was all in favor. And then we did the East Mansfield Street and Penn Avenue. Myers and Shock. Myers and Shock. So, uh, and uh, I adjourned the meeting at 7.34. So, pretty quick. Thank you. Any questions or comments regarding that report? We'll get one typed up for you. Uh, uh, moving on, traffic commission, Mayor Reeser, yeah, you have some minutes to share with us. I just want to make a comment, Mr. Weirbach got paid by the word tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway, traffic commission, uh, I'll try to be quick here, and everybody's tired. Tuesday, March 20th, 2018, 2 p.m., myself, Mr. Wagner, police chief, Kathy, I can inquire if you should over there. You kept, you made a motion for minutes on February 9, 2018, traffic commission meeting, seconded by Chad Swimley, motion passed, four-way stop on Walnut and Lucas. A concerned resident of Walnut asked the traffic commission to consider a four-way stop to help prevent any fatalities. He has led to several people being hit. Jeff Wagner made a motion, seconded by Swimley, to install stop signs on Walnut Street at Lucas for a 90-day trial. Motion passed. Jeff Dunn will call and locate and have the signs put in. Approximately one week, the meeting will be notified of the study and will be on the city website. No truck signs on Sears. Concerned residents have witnessed many trucks going down Sears from Mary to West Mansfield Street. Trucks are causing issues with ruts and yards, holding up traffic. 
Jeff Dunn will install signs. ODOT traffic study council approved. Copies of the studies are included in part of attachment one. The commission approved items three, four, five. The ODOT study and letter will be sent to the Health Committee and Safety Committee to have the traffic control map amended. Wagner made a motion seconded by Swimley to amend the traffic control map on Quaker Road from State Route 4 to Tiffin Street to be a 55 MPA zone speed zone on Sosnowski Avenue from Mount Zion Road to Beale Avenue to be a 45 MPA speed zone on Clinton Street from East Irving to the US 30 ramp to be a 45 MPA speed zone motion pass. There's no new business. Old business speed limits are not the same on both sides of various streets. We are waiting here back from Mark Baker on the following streets, West Mansfield, East Southern Avenue. The site of this table. Before we stop on West Mansfield Spring, West Mansfield of Poplar, and Mary Street of Poplar, the commission voted to suspend the 90-day trial to approve the four-way stops with time served. The four-way stops have proven to be efficient for traffic flow. Uh, Schwimley made a motion seconded by Dave Kempke to maintain the four-way stops at West Mansfield Street. At Spring Street, West Mansfield Street, Poplar Street, and Mary Street, Poplar Street, motion passed. Marion Road, no Jake Brake Stein, the item was tabled October 25, 2017. Chief Kepke will update on a state of city ordinance to accompany the sign, item still tabled. Wagner made a motion second by Schwimley to adjourn 237, motion passed. Questions or comments to the mayor regarding this traffic commission report? I can say the walnut at Lucas is nothing but good feedback. Ah, that is guaranteed. Most people like it just because of the fact that when they're going through Lucas or going across Walnut, now they don't have to worry so much about the traffic coming because of parked cars and not being able to see them. So it's just it makes it better. So that's one I've got nothing but good feedback on. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would say I don't like it. So done, please. There you go. Complain to me, everybody. Yeah, complain to you. Okay, I like it too for the festival purpose too, because they always make that a four-way during the Crawford's festival, so it's that way year-round, so it's not a surprise that time of year. Okay, understood. Uh, a question about the the um, ODOT traffic study. We don't have any legislation this evening. No, we for this because we because we ODOT said it's kind of an all-or-none deal. We had to take it back to traffic commission and. And discuss it further. So, but we can do it, but we, we just can't do it saying that we use just, their study. Right, yeah, so we have to, yeah, there's, I have some clarification and I talked to, a, uh, actually emailed the gentleman from ODOT and had some questions about, I was concerned primarily about a 40, the ODOT's proposal for a 45 mile an hour speed limit from Beale to the city limits south, you know, in fact, McDonald's and all the restaurants there and the shopping, I thought that was a little high. Uh, so I wanted to have some clarification on that. That could be kept at 35. So I'll keep the uh, uh, updates as I get back. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I need a motion to accept the committee minutes and related committee reports collectively. So, second. So, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got Mr. Fogg, and who seconded it? Mr. Myers, <laughs> motion by Mr. Folk, second by Mr. Myers to accept the committee minutes and related committee reports collectively. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. Report of city officers. Mayor Reeser. Thank you, Madam President. Over was tired. I will submit my report and paraphrase it and saying that we had the, uh, a couple student groups we met with, uh, Holy Trinity, St. Joe's were here. We had a mock. Uh, Trial, which uh, President presided over, nobody got hurt. Thank you. Uh, kids were well behaved and they love coming here. We love having them here. Also met with uh, Pearl Crawford, um, third graders this week, of uh, this junior achievement. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm. You heard great things from our school system, lots of uh, positive things. And, you know, I like the idea of the uh, school resource officer. I'm 100% in favor of it. Um, thanks to uh, Chief, Captain Stevens, yourself, uh, Al Basinger has been doing this for the kids for 19 years. Um, and I don't want to steal any uh, thunder from the shipper, but you know, uh, uh, Vida had uh, several people for the last few days doing taxes for free, and that's much appreciated. And, and I know Ms. Shipper is very tired. She's congratulations on completing another tax year. So thank you, Madam President. Okay, any questions for the mayor this evening? None. Moving on. Service Safety Director Wagner. Mr. Wagner has referral to ODOT, ODOT consent legislation for the US 30 bypass resurfacing, the state Route 4 in the north resurfacing to health and safety. 
Uh, the Board of Control of the old uh, WTP bid was tentatively awarded to Allen Excavating and Raw Water Line Conversion. Butterfly Valve of Sludge Lagoon bid was tentatively awarded to Great Lakes Demolition, pending EPA funding for Jones and Henry's engineer recommendation. The two, uh, 2018 uh, mill and paved bid was awarded to Cyrus Road Materials. Uh, this Friday will be clean up day of Pioneer students coming for their annual clean up day, 20 to 30 students, I think, maybe more even. Uh, be in all Miller Park and City Hall to help with the annual spring clean up day. Um, so, we're going to give them a shout out. Thank questions you. Or, any questions or about the service director's report? Okay, I need a motion then to refer uh, the ODOT consent legislation for the U.S. 30 bypass resurfacing and State Route 4 South resurfacing. Boy, does it need it to health and safety committees. So moved. Okay, second? Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Fote uh, for the ODOT consent legislation for the Route 30 bypass resurfacing and State Route 4 South resurfacing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Any motion passed. Thank you. Law Director, Mr. Atlas. Thank you, Madam President. I don't really have a written report tonight. I will say uh, May the 4th is our first uh, movie night in the park. It is uh, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> but uh, uh, this body, uh, Council members have uh, graciously stepped up and are sponsoring our first movie night where we kind of release a full list of all the, all the sponsors um, this, probably the, this week. Uh, one referral to health and safety. I would like to refer a six month ban on snow. Okay, uh, now as far as the, the movies at the park, yeah. we're not allowed to release the names of the movie. Yeah, right? it's a weird licensing thing. You can't, I can release the names, but, um, uh, and I have uh, told people, but um, they're, they're, you're not allowed to promote it. You're not allowed to advertise it. Like I couldn't put the thing out on Facebook. So everybody who sponsored a movie, they know what their movie is so that if they want to do something along with that theme, they're, they're able to do so. So you're going to announce a theme for it. Well, there's a theme, and, and, and we just can't promote it. So we can't put a big sign saying these movies, and we can't, you know, list them all on Facebook. So we get, I've posted it on Facebook, so you'll see the listing of the uh, hints. And if you can't figure it out from my hints, then... Uh, <laughs> Aliens live on the upper story of the home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and, so I, I anticipate a lot of things. We're, we have... Um, uh, We'll have the street closed on the side on the side of the park uh, from Sandusky to the alley. Um, that will be our lobby. Uh, we'll have some food vendors. We'll have uh, whoever sponsoring the movie that night is going to have some stuff out there. Guardian Angels are going to be out there with, uh, with popcorn. Uh, we're going to try and line up a couple more sponsors to make sure we got a lot of things for the kids. Um, I, I May 4th might not be very warm, but we have hopes that some of the movies it might be kind of warm. Um, so I, I think it'll be a great, great event. Bring your own chair. Bring your own chair or lounge in the grass or mud as you can see. No sitting on the uh, on the artwork and no. uh, I think it'll be I think we're on the phone. Madam Chair, what do you facetiously said about the six month ban on snow? Now what about snow cones? You got to, I mean, we've been approached by a church that wants to provide free snow. If you are a snow cone vendor or someone who wants to provide okay. snow cones, give me a call. We'll get you out there in the lobby. Right. That's right. <laughs> so the more we can pack in the lobby and make it a bit for everybody, the better it will be. Any questions for the law director this evening? Uh, just uh, with the sponsor, uh, if your sponsor sponsors the movie, are they allowed to promote the movie they sponsored with saying the name, or is it still a no no for them to use the name? Uh, the, it says, the, the license says that we're not allowed to promote the name of the movie. So. Um, but I'm the licensee, uh, the city is the licensee, so I'm not allowed to promote the movie. Makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on. Auditor, Mrs. Schiffers. Thank you, Madam President. I have no written report tonight. My eyes are still swimming from all the numbers I looked at today. I'm but sure. I'm glad to report we made it through another tax season. I'd like to thank my hardworking staff 
and the uh, Volunteer Income Tax Agency for being here in the last two days. And I realized I haven't taken signs down yet because I came in here just in time for the swearing in. So uh, if anyone has not turned in their tax return yet, the boxes are in the lobby tonight. As long as the lobby's open and you get those returns put in those boxes, they'll be considered on time. The post office will, does not postmark past 5 o'clock here at New Cyrus, so don't count on a postmark of the 17th if you drop it off tonight. And that's all I have at this point. Okay. And a big thank you to those volunteers. I just sort of walked by the door out there today and I thought I was going to get drugged in here because <laughs> I was carrying the paper and he said, I'll take it. And I said, no, you won't. <laughs> So, um, uh, real nice, friendly people, and they do a great job, a great service for the city, because they are, are all volunteers. Okay, we have the uh, Auditor Statement of Cash Position dated March the 31st, 2018. I need a motion to accept and file that. So, second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Wirebaugh. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. And before you, you have the uh, treasurer's uh, report for March of 2018. It's there for your, uh, you to review, and we'll talk about it next meeting. Please, Chief Kepke already gave his report. I need a motion now to accept city officer's report. So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Fogt, second by Mr. Truca, to accept the city officer's report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you very much. This is where we have visitors input regarding reports of standing or special committees and of city officers. Does anyone wish to address council this evening? None? Moving on. For consideration of proposed legislation for the first time. Uh, we have seven pieces of legislation, four ordinances and three resolutions. Ordinance number 11, 2018, and ordinance to amend chapter 189 of the city income tax code to adopt sections 718.80 through 718.95 of the Ohio Revised Code and declaring the emergency waiving the 30-day waiting period. That goes to the Finance Committee. Ordinance number 12, 2018, repealing and replacing Ordinance number 9, 2018, the Table of Human Resources Staffing Organization for the City of Besaris, Ohio, retroactive to January 1, 2018, and declaring an emergency. That is referred to Finance Committee. Ordinance number 13, 2018, repealing and replacing Ordinance number 8, 2018, Establishing the Compensation and Human Resources Staffing Sick Leave and Vacation of Employees of various departments in the City of Research, Ohio, and enacting in its place legislation pertaining to the Compensation and Human Resources Staffing Sick Leave and Vacation of Employees of various departments in the City of Research, Ohio, effective to January 1, 2018, and declaring an emergency. Uh, that is referred to finance. Uh, resolution, I'm sorry, Ordinance Number 14, 2018. Amending and supplementing ordinance number 57, 2017, being the annual appropriations ordinance for 2018, by appropriating from unappropriated street construction maintenance and repair funds a sum of $200,000 to the capital outlay line item and $3,750 to the contractual services line item within the street construction maintenance and repair category within the street construction maintenance and repair subparagraph. Further, appropriating from unappropriated waterworks funds the sum of $10,086 to the capital outlay line item and $3,750 to the contractual services line item within the distribution category within the waterworks subparagraph. Further appropriating from unappropriated sewage disposal funds the sum of $13,250 to the contractual services line item within the sewers and drains category within the sewage disposal subparagraph. And finally appropriating from unappropriated stormwater utility funds the sum of $6,250 to the contractual services line item within the stormwater utility category within the stormwater utility subparagraph and declaring an emergency. That's referred to finance. Resolution number 19, 2018, amending resolution 205, 2017, by authorizing and directing the Desiris Public Service Safety Director on behalf of the City of Desiris, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter injury contract or contracts not to exceed $2,312,527.72 with the lowest and best bidder or bidders for the million and painting of Southern Avenue as part of the Southern Avenue Sanitary Sewer Trunk Line Project as a part of the overall consent decree between the City of the Cyrus and the Federal EPA. Finally, authorizing and directing the Cyrus City Auditor to draw a warrant or warrants in payment, therefore, from the appropriate appropriation or appropriations and declaring an emergency. Resolution number 220, 2018, 
authorizing and directing the mayor of the city of Desires, Ohio, on behalf of said, said city, to enter into contract with the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, for the purchase of property and facilities at 311 West Irving Street under terms detailed in the attached contract and declaring an emergency. And finally, uh, that's uh, public lands and zoning. Uh, funding resolution number 221, uh, authorizing and directing the law director on behalf of the city of Desires, Ohio, to enter into a contract or contracts, as the case may be, for the purchase of one property in all attachments located therein, picture attached, located at 1517 East Mansfield Street, at a total cost not to exceed $26,978.02, further authorizing and directing the Desires City Auditor to draw a warrant for warrants and payment, therefore, from the appropriate appropriation or appropriations and declaring an emergency. And that is public items and buildings today. Okay. <clears throat> I need a motion to accept this as the first reading. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Truca, second by Mr. Fote to accept this as the first reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. <clears throat> we refer ordinance number 11 2018 to finance committee, ordinance number 12 2018 to finance, ordinance 13 2018 to finance, ordinance 14 2018 to finance. Resolution 219-2018 to finance. Resolution 220-2018 to public lands and buildings. Resolution 221-2018 to public lands and buildings. This is the time where we have public participation. Any member of the general public may present their input or comments on legislation that has been read for the first time. Does anyone wish to address council this evening? Please state your name and address. Kurt Bankhausen, 1675 South Sandusky Avenue. You guys are going to vote tonight on an issue that I think the majority of the Cyrus residents are against, and you even asked them for their public input to be contacted by, and you're, you're ignoring those people. Those are the people that you are supposed to be represented. And if there's, if you know something about this issue that you feel that it's worth still voting for, even though the residents are against it, then you did not do your jobs to convey to those people why we need to do that. So I just wanted to point that out before you make your votes on this issue. Anyone else to address council this evening? Okay, do you want to take a recess or do you want to plunge, on, plunge no, forward? We're moving forward, okay. No recess. I'm going to take over here. <clears throat> uh, committee reports on pending legislation. Finance committee. Finance is favorable to Ordinance 11-2018, Amendment of the Income Tax Code. Finance is also favorable to Ordinance 12-2018, the fillet slash solid waste. <coughs> Finance is favor favorable to uh, Ordinance 13-2018, Employee Manpower Seasonal Help. Finance is favorable to Ordinance 14-2018, Various Appropriations. Finance is favorable to Resolution 219-2018, Amendment of Resolution 205-2017, the Southern Avenue Sewer. Public Lands and Buildings? Uh, public Lands and Buildings is favorable Don't give up. to Resolution 220-2018. <coughs> Purchase of the former ODOT facility and public lands and buildings is favorable to resolution 221 2018. Purchase of property. I need a motion to accept the, these reports. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Truca to accept the reports. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. For further consideration of pending legislation. For the second and third reading of ordinance number 11-2018, do I, which is the amendment of the income tax code, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. McKeever. Yes. Truca. Yes. 
Sack. Oh. Yes. Shock. Yes. Myers. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Ordinance number 11, 2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed ordinance number 11 2018? <coughs> so moved. Second. Wireball. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Oak. Yes. Shock. Yes. Ordinance number 11 2018 is duly adopted. <clears throat> For the second and third reading of proposed ordinance number 12 2018, which is the billet regarding solid waste, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. Okay. Wireball. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sass. Both. Yes. Shock. Yes. Ordinance number 12, 2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed ordinance number 12 2018? So moved. Second. Both. Yes. Myers. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Shock. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Ordinance number 12 2018 is duly adopted. For the second and third readings of proposed ordinance number 13 2018, which is the employee manpower regarding seasonal help, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the contact, the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. McKeever. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Oh. Yes. Shock. Yes. Myers. Yes. Ordinance number 13, 2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed ordinance number 13 2018? So moved. Second. Pope. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Shop. Yes. Ordinance number 13 2018 is duly adopted. For the second and third reading of proposed ordinance number 14 2018, which are various appropriations, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. McKeever. Yes. Pope. Yes. Shot. Yes. Myers. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Ordinance number 14, 2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed <coughs> ordinance number 14 2018? So moved. Second. Myers. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Pope. Yes. Shop. Yes. Ordinance number 14 2018 is duly adopted. For the second and third reading of resolution number 219 2018, which is the amendment of resolution number 205 2017 for the Southern Avenue sewer project. Do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. Shaw. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Pope. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. Yes. Resolution number 219 2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed resolution 219 2018? So moved. Second. Shaw. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sad. Oh. Yes. Resolution number 219-2018 is duly adopted. For the second and third readings of proposed resolution 220-2018, which is the purchase of the former ODOT facility, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. Shaw. Yes. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. No. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Resolution 220-2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed resolution 220-2018? So moved. Second. Shot. Yes. Wireball. Yes. Truca. Yes. Sack. Boat. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Myers. No. Ordinance, or excuse me, resolution number 220-2018 is duly adopted. For the second and third reading of proposed resolution 221-2018,
Do I hear a motion to suspend, which is purchase of property in the corner of Mainsfield and Penn? Uh, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? I move. Second. Second. Shaw? Yes. Truca? Yes. Sat? Boat? Yes. McKeever? Yes. Myers? Yes. Wireball? Yes. Resolution number 221-2018. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed resolution 221-2018? So moved. Second. Trucker? <coughs> yes. McKeever? Yes. Myers? Yes. Wireball? Yes. Sack? Boat? Yes. Shot? Yes. Resolution number 221-2018 is duly adopted. Thank you very much. Old business. Public hearing on allowing multi-family housing in R3 district as a conditional use to set for 5.30 p.m. on May the 10th. The draft legislation is posted in the zoning office. We need to refer the four proposed traffic changes to the traffic control map back to the Health and Safety Committee. So I need a motion to do that. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Fote, second by Mr. McKeever, to refer the four proposed traffic uh, control map changes back to health and safety. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. Any other old business anyone else would like to bring up this evening? None? Moving? Yes. What is, a con what is the condition of the water line for outside the city? How is that progression? Are we going to bring that up? That's supposed to be at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. We we'll tried to have a okay. meeting. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to. Tomorrow, but we didn't have any response to it. Okay. Yeah. So, Thursday. Thursday. Thank you. We have, we'll have some things for you that you can you know, decide what you want to do. Thank you. Any other old business? Um, Mr. I, Cove? Just uh, about the purchase of the former road out facility. I just want to make it clear that there are people out there in the community that did want us to purchase that facility. I have heard that from others just as well from Mr. Piper this evening. So. Thank you. Anyone else? New and miscellaneous business. Wednesday, April the 18th, Altresa Club of Pizarras has their barbecue chicken dinner from 4 to 6 p.m. out of the county fairgrounds. It's a drive through and pick it up $8.50. They're extra ones, so if you want, come on out and see us. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be sunshiny tomorrow, isn't it? In Florida. In Florida, thank you. On Saturday, April the 21st, is the Kiwanis Community Garage Sale from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the County Fairgrounds. It's free. Still taking uh, applications, too. Pardon me? Still taking applications. Okay, for people to rent a space out there to use a space, okay. And uh, Tuesday, April the 24th, the Board of Zoning Appeals slash Board of Building Standards and Appeals is meeting at 4 p.m. Please come. Please come. Tuesday, May 1st, the Board of Zoning Appeals is at 4 p.m. Is that a second one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Please come. <laughs> Tuesday, May the 1st, the Rat Pack, Crawford County Community Concert Association, is from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Bissaris Elementary School. There are always <coughs> extra tickets available, and they always have great shows. You can call 419-562. 3224 if you'd like to get a, a ticket. And Friday, May the 4th, the Humane Society of Crawford County putting on the dog charity auction is from 6 to 10 p.m. at Pickwick Place. Cost is $12.50 to attend that. Anyone else with new or miscellaneous business? New business. Um, I wanted to see if we could uh, put in the um, committee uh, to see about getting a dumpster for cleanup day. Um, maybe right out here uh, beside our city garage over here and have people, local residents bring in maybe uh, laptop computers, kind of like the Lowe and Bull Park did this weekend. It gives uh, residents the ability to throw away some electronics that they couldn't normally throw away out on the curb or something like that. So I actually called the um, solid waste and it's $51 a ton, depending on what size of uh, dumpster you can see. That we have to pay that? We would have to pay $51 a ton okay. for however much. But I wanted to see about doing that for the community. Are you, are you sure with the electronics and everything like that? I mean, it's, is there an additional charge for those? Uh, that's what I asked, and that's what they told me was 51 ton. It's 51 ton for regular refuse, but I'm not sure. I think electronics may have a search. I, we can look into it. I, can, I, I, think, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Okay. We can look into it maybe. 
Okay, anything else? Yeah, yeah I, I guess. Oh, Mr. We, we got a notice uh, that Friday out at the uh, at the Trillium is the celebrity waiter for Holy Bear Matters. Yeah. Oh, I guess I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Well, we're waiters. Yeah, I guess I'm a waiter, and are you a waiter too? So well, I was actually going to attend, it. but I guess now I'll be. So, some of the illustrious uh, panel here will be waiting. So. <laughs> I just bought out today. So. Yeah, you did. <laughs> do you have the skills to do that? Uh, oh, I hope so. <laughs> we even, all well, offers even sponsored it for a Padawan. I don't even know what that is, but that's what we sponsored it as. So now I got to be a waiter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Okay, that's this Friday at the Trillium at what time? Uh, 6.30. Yes. I guess 6.30. Contact Home Care Matters if you want to come out there. Yeah. Okay. It gets pretty wild, I guess. Yeah, it's a big thing every year. Okay, uh, anything else? Then I need, we need to excuse uh, Ms. Sack uh, for being absent this evening. Motion to uh, excuse Ms. Sack. Oh, second. Mr. Myers and Mr. Fote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Well, should have <laughs> That was a late aye. Did I say same sign? I didn't say no. You said same sign. Yeah, I'm not happy that she wasn't here today. Right. <laughs> 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 the joint regular committee meetings. All referrals from this council meeting and any open project list items may be discussed during the committee meetings. The referrals from tonight are? We have uh, five new referrals. We have the two um, Roberts Festival um, requests, the one with uh, the traffic closures and the one with the uh, the agreement on the cleanup and the police. Um, ones in, I think both of those go to health and safety, actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Roberts agreement is based on finance as a vote from council. Uh, we have the traffic map changes that uh, we talked about two weeks ago. Those are going back to health and safety from council. We have the two um, ODOT resurfacings in town, the consent legislation pieces. Uh, those are from the circuit safety director, and those go to health and safety. Uh, we have the uh, school resource officer in B. Cyrus uh, Elementary School. That's from council um, to finance with them. Also, the health and safety, that's already appropriate. The money, I believe, is already appropriated for that, isn't it? For the SRO? Yeah. For the new SRO. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to go to finance because we have to accept the money. We have to accept the money from. Yes. Okay. We already have appropriate. We already have appropriated the appropriate. position. Yes. The position is already appropriated as a police officer. Right. So okay. to it's it just as finance. Because she has to. How she accepts it. That's all. Right. Anyway, I can get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she will accept the money. So that's it. I'll be happy to accept the money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, those are, that's in finance, those are the five new uh, referrals, and then we have the bottom line expansion outside of the city limits, that is the service and finance, that's only in general for those, and that's all we have. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved, second. <laughs> motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Fote to adjourn. We are adjourned at 9.12 p.m. <laughs>